Yep. Your beard is touching. Motherfucker. You, you should... You can, you no, you clip? braid it. Good. You look so good braiding. It's not long enough to braid yet. We got another okay. this much. Right, so we'll okay, but I have you have so to put it a bit lower. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous. But, uh, anyway. I mean, we could just do this one, but... Yes! <laughs> oh, come on, that's... That's okay. what, once it's braided, that's exactly what you That's do. what we'll do. Yeah. You braid and you put the... Oh, that's going to look so badass. Are we recording? Kind of. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. Do you want like a hair clip or something? No, or, like, scrunchy? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome this back. Is to you should, this is where you miss having a daughter, right? there, yeah, because that, that would have fun. This is the podcast with which you would expect the least amount of scrunchy conversation. And yet we've opened with it right <laughs> yes. away. By the way, Scott McGee here. We've had Scott... Uh, we all know Scott before, but we've had other guests on the podcast. Not a single male guest has had hair except for Richard. Have you noticed that? Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, I, ha- I have it. Yeah. Do you yeah. Have By the way, this is shit. It's not bold. Thank you. The problem is, yeah. is yes. I know I'm pretty sure that if Julian's just went, went for it, it yeah. wouldn't be much to go for. If you went for it, would you have hair hair? Yes. Like you think you'd, you could still yeah. do it? Did you not see the picture of me? Granted, it was 20 years ago. Exactly, but 20 the, years ago. Yeah, 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 okay, whatever. <laughs> so we're joined by Scott McGee here. Scott uh, is kind of an OG from, fuck, this is where I first heard of Julian from, from this the Wadcast podcast. That uh, was my first podcast ever. Scott was podcast also podcast. my first podcast interview that was a person that had done things. Basically, I flew here yep. three years ago, three and a half years ago for that. I right, because you wanted someone. It was the same trip as yours, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the time I met Julian, so we've come full circle. <laughs> I, I'm so happy that yeah. I could get you on the podcast because I, I did my first what, like ten, fifteen, with you. Yeah, I think it was June of 2013. It was that Obama thing where you were. I remember. Oh yeah. The first time. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you reminded me of that because I didn't remember. Yeah, 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 because you missed it the first one, remember? Yeah. Because yeah. you were do, you were detailed, and then there was the day that kid um, had a pipe bomb at the Santa Monica College. Both, yeah, he had yeah. both well, things. It wasn't so a pipe bomb. The, the president was here, so he had to go do work, or what? What was the yeah, story? Yeah, he was so, detailed. Yeah. Um, okay. Obama was in our city, and so we escorted him from... You know, the crazy thing is, whenever a president goes anywhere... Yeah. There's like a plan from the government, from local agencies, from all the acronyms that are part of that, the, the logistical planning of moving that person yeah. around. So when he comes into our city and then moves to a house, there's a ton of people. Like from, to go from like A to B, yeah. all the streets are blocked off with people. Alleys, streets, every, every alley, every street has somebody blocking it off. And then usually, if I remember correctly, two things ahead of time, like vantage points, oh, sewers. Yeah. When they came, he came through our town one time, and they go through, and they have to, they tape off all the sewer lids, mm-hmm. so that you know that any sewer lid that's been raised. So then they do that ahead of time, and like the amount of pre preparation for that is fucking bananas. I know, and I realized <laughs> this when I was lucky enough. Check us out, like you know. We all do things, but I was able to get into a presidential motorcade, which was really cool, just to be part That's of really it. Cool, yeah. yeah. Right. So we were going there, and we were part of the protection detail. So Obama was in a house. We were outside the house um, in a car with our gear on and rifles in our laps, like as a reactive force. Then we started getting calls of um, a shooting happening. Shooting. Right. Yeah. And then. Right. First, yeah, he threatened the pipe bomb, and then he started shooting. Yeah. Right. Well, he ended up killing his uh, dad and right. brother, yeah, yeah, yeah. lit his house on fire, carjacked right. somebody, shot a bus, drove, shot some other people, yeah. and it just kept escalating. And we didn't know if it was like a diversion or not. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, uh, yeah. do we go? Do uh, we stay? Do we? Like, yeah. So that's why I wasn't there for his first episode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Long yeah, story short. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. so you stood Julian up for bad. the fucking I feel bad. greater like, good. And... Yeah, because we were, I started developing a relationship with him and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and getting him on the show, and it was his first podcast, and then it's like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be there. You're going to go meet these strangers, and good <laughs> luck. Because we, we had met at my uh, gym in uh, Torrance. He's mm. the one who brought me back okay. to train and, and everything. Oh, no he sure. was like, one day he contacted me. I was like, yeah, that's how we met the yeah. first time. Yeah. yeah. So really that cool. came out, and I remember it came out my birthday in, tw- so it was June 12th, 2013, that first episode. And then our first together was November of 2013. 
Right. Right, right, I remember one. Yeah. In fact, that's where I, just, I was just looking at this. Wow. I know wait, wait, that was six years ago? That's what, I know the viewers aren't necessarily going to be able to see this, Fuck but me. that right there. Is that our first together? That's our first, that's after our first podcast in 2013. Oh man. Six years He's ago. way beefier. A little beefier. A little bit beefier. <laughs> What's the, uh... I'm about 15 pounds heavier now. <laughs> and then now it's you're all traps ago. back then well especially like this I don't know if that helps yeah. for anybody but yeah well, we'll put the picture we'll put on, but yeah it was six years ago wow man. well seven now seven now yeah 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 from November to, yeah oh that's crazy and then after that um you were awesome um a natural and yeah. a just such a mountain of an awesome accent Yes, exactly. That always works. It is pretty on its own. I think it's charismatic enough. I'm not even sure if Julian's charismatic. I haven't decided it's yet. Just, it might just, yeah, it's hard to tell. It might yeah, just exactly. be the accent. Whatever, it works. That's what I care. <laughs> yeah. Well, so outside of the, the awesome accent, uh, just an incredible wealth of information. So it was natural to, to continue the relationship and basically became a, uh, uh, it came down to like over the years being a, a guest host. Right. Yeah, that was that was really cool because when you had constellations, I'm like, yeah. I'm coming. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah I'll jump yeah. in the car right now. But I remember in the beginning there were several times that like I really had to focus on what you were saying. Yes. <laughs> like, well, it is okay. not in my head. Mm-hmm. People, mm-hmm. people don't understand, but because uh, they don't do podcasts. Mm-hmm. But when the first five, six times, it's a bit nerve wracking. Like he, yeah. now, now he's just talking. But back then, like you have. This the you know like you have a helmet you have a microphone and the guys are careful you're doing this you're doing that and you're like but people are gonna listen to and me you're in after a room full so, of strangers and well, plus you can't fuck up because yeah. now it's recorded so you at first it's yeah okay right. I apologize for the helmet that was <laughs> no actually thank God because then I could hear myself I was like is that my accent <laughs> Jesus Christ um, but it was um, it was oh it was cool. Yeah, and I guess some, some context for the listeners. There's on podcasts. There's several different ways that are done. There's done with um, different type of microphones. Yep. Whether they're right. a headset or whether they're like I use for the CC way. So for here on table stands or these little lav mics that are on your shirt. And they're all different. Yeah. All different, and they capture sound differently. And um, so speaking of that, why don't you do video? Please explain people so that so they see the podcast from our side. Instead of, yeah. yeah. Let me Just back one thing before yeah. going to yeah. that. So Scott has a podcast right now called The Sisu Way. Yeah. Essentially one-to-one interviews, usually, yes. right? One-to-one interviews that are in this setting, in this place, which I'll get a little bit of video, like roundabout of it, so you guys can see it. But Scott has this very meticulous, very, very intentional vibe in here, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's to create good conversation and all of those things. But it's very interesting for me because I see it visually, it's so compelling and that the podcast is audio only. So tell us, tell us why. All right. Well, a couple of things about the setting. Uh, if, if I go even back a little bit further, um, I grew up sharing a room with my sister. I didn't have my own room until I was, I think, 23 years old. And so when I had that, uh, my own space, I, I really was like very grateful for it. And I took care of it. And at the time, to like 22, 23 year olds, my buddies used to make fun of me and calling it the hotel room. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have, I get to have my own room. I'm you don't understand how much I like this. Yes, yeah. like, it's my space. Like, I can just be in here. Yeah. And so now, moving forward, like, a lot of years, um, having space to take care of is not something I take for granted. And so everything in here, I really am thinking and thoughtful about. And yeah. it has to be something that like has meaning to me. I don't just like put stuff up. You can tell looking in here, if it, if it has a space in here, it matters. And it's right? you. Well, everything that is in this space is you. It has meaning to you. It came from a place. But then it's great because then people, when people are here, they know who they're talking to. So that creates, that creates a bone right away. Well, maybe they can help me figure out myself. Yeah, <laughs> too, right? Because then I put like, the old podcast. Here, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, here, here's all the stuff that I got on the wall. Yeah. yeah. You want to help what me sort it out? Listen, you, I, you I, I like you have it. psychologists I, yeah. on the podcast and we get the stuff for free. So tell me who I, 
<laughs> this is about expression, not, you know, <laughs> yeah. introversion. But actually, that's if you, I mean, over your shoulder, over this door over there, the Temet Noske yep. sign above my door. Mm -hmm. It's actually similar to the one in the Matrix. It's Latin for know thyself. Okay. So part of the space is really doing that and exploring myself and getting to know what I like, what goes on, what speaks to me, what feelings does this stuff bring about. Yeah. And that's part of when people come in here because, you know, the podcast is very intimate. Um, I don't like to have an a echo podcast. Of like People come on, they've been on a lot of different podcasts. Um, I'll listen to them and I generally pick up on there's something going on with that person that they're not talking about. Yeah, that's where you will try to try to go. Yes, because a lot of podcasts are very resume centered. You know, that's my least favorite thing yeah. about podcasts, especially yeah. kind of coming in the fitness space. Mm -hmm. Was anytime you would interview someone, it would be, so how did you get started in powerlifting? Okay, or how many times mm -hmm. do you have to hear the story about how someone started doing CrossFit? Well, okay, my, how many times? The worst one is, please tell me about yourself. Yeah, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Again, well, and it's like for Julian on having him on when he was on other podcasts, me as just a listener at that time, as I always could see, it was like this guy's they're pumping the brakes just on the information always, so it yeah. wasn't enough space. So, but with, with the Sisu way, you tend to find that, that little spot where there's something going on, mm -hmm. and is that kind of where you just try to that's where yeah. you try to blow well, up? Well, yeah, so a lot of things with that, especially when, when, when people have done that a lot. I will open up with a with a uh, straight right, like a, like in like in boxing, like Muhammad Ali when he fought some people, he would a straight right was something that was not expected. Mm -hmm. It was like a, an odd punch yeah. to like throw them off, like oh wow, oh whoa, because yeah. now because everyone thinks it's going to go this way. Oh, I've been on podcasts before. We're just going to do this. We take it and easy. Then, we make small talk for ten minutes. Yeah, la la da. So the first question, I'll knock them off of that, yeah. and then and kind of like, oh, like and then get their attention. And that's what I'm trying to do is get their attention and then really actually start talking. Yeah. And so I've, uh, I, you know, when people come on, I pay a lot of attention to what they've written um, in their podcast. And I've actually referred to, if you want to hear more about that, listen to this podcast. Mm -hmm. I'll refer to any other podcast. And then we'll talk about what is really going on. Because a lot of times, anyone that's listening to this knows you are not your resume. That doesn't like... That doesn't explain actually like your character. Yeah. It's all the hardships and the setbacks and the, the adversity and the, the heartbreaks and the, like the real hard mm -hmm. nitty gritty stuff that we all go through. That makes you you. Yep. That defines your character. It's not like your degree struggle, or yeah. your certificate or your yeah. any of that stuff. And then that's what we talk about. But to get that out of people. Oh yeah, so to go back. Yeah. so much. I think yeah. that's what people miss. That's why we use certain microphones will change the reaction of mm -hmm. people that you get based on that. Like when we are doing the podcast podcast, you have the helmet. What people don't realize is first podcast you do or first fight, you're nervous. The helmet after a while becomes uncomfortable. You start sweating it. Yeah, you have, it makes if, you... And if you hear your own voice and that's not something you do, it's disorienting, there's a slight it's delay. Distracting. It's, and all of yeah, those things, if you're weird. somebody who's trying to talk and be open and vulnerable, is just another yeah. barrier to that. Totally. Very often. Um, so to go back to the space is when people come... Well, first of all, you know, I always do in person mm -hmm. for yeah. a lot of different reasons. But you're not going to get that out of them on no, screen, that's for no, sure. Yeah. No. So when people are traveling, they're generally they're in their car, they're probably rushing, um, there's traffic, there's all kinds of noise, um, all kinds of stuff to assault your ability to like relax. Just driving in LA already is a yes. sympathetic response, right? Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> so to get them to switch into that, and Julian knows all about this, and so I'm sure your listeners, to get them into a parasympathetic state starts in, like I set it up prior to them even arriving and so once they're here they park the car they're oh I've arrived oh my god yeah. hello we hug it out but once they actually step into here that's really where it starts like the whole process has already started so the lighting's a certain way um, I get the candle going um, a certain amount of time prior to the show because mm -hmm. I want a certain scent in here um, to clean I don't have a lot of clutter because I want them to like, yeah. like have like a, 
uh, freedom. Like when it's nice and clean, yep. clean, it's not the same. It's it's it helps you relax. Yeah, yeah. Right? You can move in the space. There's nothing in your way. You can. Everything yeah. is there to kind of be. Yeah, and it's but just us. Everything have, matches. Yep. Yep. Um, I have a certain um, type of music playing at a certain volume because it really just helps. And then to to let that person know that they are very very important to me. I was about to say that it shows how much you care mm -hmm. about them being comfortable and yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the people that come on are like, it's a, such a special conversation. So that every step of the process, I value tremendously. Mm -hmm. I think people fail to understand that nerve-wracking nerve it can be for some of the, uh, not the interviewer, because you've been doing it, but the interviewee is. Uh, sometimes that's why some podcasts don't go well, is because it takes almost nothing to get the, right, the wrong vibe out of someone. And the entire hour is ruined. Like some people, yeah. they'll never recover. Then it'll be yes or no answers. You'll be yeah. like, uh huh, uh huh, or whatever. And it's yeah. once you're there, man. Ooh, that's a hard podcast. Yeah. I still get really. I still get. <clears throat> I don't want to say nervous. Excited. Yeah, but I, it's. I I outwork my nervousness, so I out prepare. Mm -hmm. Is that your way of out of it? Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, I prepare. So much that I'm now, now I'm not. I'm Less not nervous. nervous. I've already. I've actually already done the episode. See, in my, my, head. my strategy, Scott, is the opposite. What I do <laughs> yeah. is see. I purposely underprepare so that when I'm nervous, I'm like, yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> and then we're yeah, just <laughs> cool. But I've learned. I've learned, and a lot of that I learned from the podcast is there are generally like certain points in the arc of the episode. Mm -hmm that I want to highlight in this person. And it's not just for the episode right now or the week it comes mm -hmm. out. Like I'm thinking generational. Yeah. That person's kids are going to listen to this or my kids are going to listen to this when they're 25 years old. So I'm thinking of that in like a, a somewhat of a, like a, um, not a keepsake, but something to pass down to other generations. Yeah. So I'm mindful of that. And so to be able to get to the story, that's where I need to prepare because without that, we veer off on too many tangents. Mm -hmm. and, and there's value in tangents often because it just, sometimes they feel organic. Mm -hmm. The issue is, so like that's why I think as a podcast host, we can fall into that trap of like, yeah, tangents are great. Next thing we know, the hour's up. Yeah. But if you only have a certain amount of time with a person, and you're like, fuck, I kind of missed all depends, the stuff I yeah. needed. It depends you know? a lot on the podcast as well because yeah, Scott yeah. has a very, very specific idea of what he wants to do with a podcast. I don't think there's very few people that can do it, that can do what Scott does. All that minutia of detail, that's exactly Scott. Yeah. If you did not, we're not doing it like that, you would never, the podcast would be gone by now. You would have never put that much work. The only reason you put the work is because you can put the work. Yeah. Me, I had very specific constraint to start my, the podcast because for me, if there's certain kind of pressure, I'm like, I'm not doing it. I will not, you know, like, so I don't want to monetize because yeah. I don't want to, I won't do a specific subject because it has to be done. I'm not going to ask, what do you want to hear? I mean, you know, like, we'll, I'll do a QA, and a but you're not going to tell me what to say, what to do on a podcast or stuff like that. I'm like, nah, it's not going to happen. So if you put that kind of pressure, it'll stop being what the podcast is for me and I just won't do it. We are extremely clear with that with Tyler. It's like, yeah. it has to be for me. It's my psychotherapy session. Whatever is spinning in my head, it has to come out. So tangents, so be it. Yeah. But that's where the, but that's where the beauty of yes, it is. Exactly. And and especially knowing why you're doing it. Yep. Like if you know, there's nothing against that from my side. No, no, but no. Just, but that's it the has only to be way it works for you. Yeah, yeah, it has to be your yeah. podcast. Yeah. And that's where people, because I'm sure your people ask you. You know, what should I do with my podcast or stuff like that? And I'm like, first of all, you have to be interesting, by the way, people, sorry, but charisma matters. <laughs> like, I think we need to say it. <laughs> and you sorry, can, it's you. So you start by just getting more interesting. Yeah, you sorry, you sorry. <laughs> uh, but it's that too, is the, it has to be your podcast. Yeah. You will never make it. You, yeah. won't it. you won't do 15 episodes, by the way. I do think the beauty in it too is that, I, I was actually looking back, it was 2020, just, just turned right now. Mm -hmm. And so... Over the course of the last decade, I think actually that from 2010 to 2020, I think the podcast space has actually done more to change what media yeah. is and how it's consumed 
than anything else right. out there, truthfully. It's decentralized everything to where now there's no fucking rules. You know, you can yeah. have a podcast that's one hour, you can have six hours, you can have seven minutes, you can tell small contained stories, you can have two hour long hangs, you can be really informative, you can sell, 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 you can do anything. Yeah. And that's pretty and fucking beautiful. The nice thing is, the, 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 nice, the problem is a lot of people don't know where to carve out their space in that is, and they just kind of do everybody's thing. Or oh, it looks easy when it's done well, which yeah. gives the wrong idea. Well, it also goes back to like their why. Yeah. Like when somebody asked me, I was like, why? Like really think about why you're doing it. Yeah. If you're not doing it for you, by the way, you'll never work. Well, let's yeah. start with that, Scott. Why Well, are you doing the Sisu Way podcast? I really started... And this is still like something I'm actually exploring, right? Because just doing a podcast, even have a social media, it's like a weird um, me thing, right? It's kind of like this weird look at me thing. And I feel, still kind of struggle with that part a little bit. Do you think it's, are you, are you saying you struggle with it because you feel like it's like open attention seeking or is it the vulnerability? You know, I'm not seeking attention. No, but, but, I, but, but I you, you see what I did. Yeah. 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 Well, I, rem- I remember, thing I remember yeah. when we first started, when I first started doing podcasts, the first couple of years, it, there's a lot of nights where it's like, why am I doing this? Who wants to fucking hear this? You know, what are you doing? I, I had and, those, but well, that's the imposter syndrome. Yeah. You always have that a little bit, especially when they do well. It's like, yeah. why do people want to listen to me anyway? Yeah, it's always that weird feeling. Well, that's what, that, that is actually why I'm like, grabbing guests all the time but then I realized sometimes I don't need a guest Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. I've done some episodes solo in fact later on tonight I'm probably going to record a solo episode yeah but I only do it when there's actually a very specific story if I had to ever do a podcast solo I would that's the one time I would have to have a massive amount of preparation just because I wouldn't know where to start or where to Uh, do anything not having someone to that's talk to a level hard. i'll tell you yeah. this i've had to do a couple times where we'll do recaps on like where we'll do say we'll do multiple interviews at the arnold or something and i'll have like 15 interviews that are all four minutes long so throughout the interview you'd have to record like a, yeah. a little cut in and out segment i never ever ever redo or edit anything that i say or anyone ever says on the podcast it's just kind of yeah. not the way it works but I'll be goddamned if I wasn't doing 10 retakes for every single one of those things. I couldn't say two sentences without fucking it up. And my whole policy on the podcast was always like, whatever it is that comes out is just the way it is. Imperfect or not, yeah. you be that often enough, you're putting yourself actually out there instead yeah. of some scripted version. But I'll be goddamned if I didn't have the opportunity to immediately hit delete and go back and redo. Uh, I'll go crazy. I would lose my mind. Yeah, well, I'll tell, tell you both something. You should both try it. Okay, so how do you do it? Like, I'm very curious. How do you do a solo podcast? What's your ritual? Okay, so let's let's go back to let's go back to the why. Yes. Right. So my very first episode was just me. I remember. And that also encompasses the why. So when my first son, when my wife was pregnant, um, my dad had cancer and he was fighting cancer, and it came down to a point where um, it looked like he wasn't going to make it. So, wife's pregnant with his first grandson, and it doesn't look like he's going to make it. So, I remember going into his hospital room and, like, having that conversation with him. Like, hey, actually just actually articulating, putting it out there that you are not going to be around for your grandson. Having to say those words like to that person, yeah. Just to express that out loud and to admit it to yourself, mm-hmm. like to your dad, and you're not going to be around. So, start writing to him. Yeah, oh, that's a conversation. So, yeah. And then I said, I will give it to him when he's of age. So knowing that, and this is you know my dad like flashing of like all the times of teaching me how to ride a bike, teaching me how to throw a baseball, yeah. football, like that's a rough racing him, wrestling, like playing Nintendo, like all the stuff that. You know, dads do to be able to say that to him about his grandson that he's not really gonna ever know. So, fast forward, um, my son is born. 
uh, he was able to come to the hospital when uh, he was born. And then uh, one week to the day later, I get a call from my mom and all she's doing is apologizing to me. And she's not calling to apologize to me to tell me that my dad died. She's calling to apologize that he didn't finish writing. So he's writing on an iPad and about two paragraphs into it of him writing to his grandson, he coughs up blood and dies. And there's information on that iPad that I never knew. So, so that initially, initially he died writing to your son. Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus Christ. And even though there was only a couple paragraphs in it, what that was was new and novel enough to where you're like, think of is it a missed opportunity because like fuck if there was so much more of this there would have there been was so, so much, much more. more. Yeah. And, it, and it already taught me a lot about him, about like he was very stoic, he was, you know, very uh, you know, his generation had this stiff upper lip. He didn't really open yeah. up very much. He just, yeah. he just very gritty and fought through and did what he needed to do for his family. Um, and so that, it didn't hit me at first, you know, and it took a while, but I realized, and that's part of where I really learned to express myself. I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to start creating content for I my kids. I won't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to start creating content for my kids. And so if you actually look at my Instagram, majority of my posts, I'm talking to my kids when they're 20 years old, mm -hmm. when they're 25 years old, in case something happens to me. Hmm. Their messages, like, people, you're like, people are like, oh, your, your, your Instagram is your always so deep and positive. Oh, I'm like, hey, yeah, it's not uh, for you, don't worry. I'm leaving <laughs> stuff for my kids. Hey, yeah. It's not for you, don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also good for me to express that stuff. And so that first episode is called For Dad. And I shared the story. I shared uh, a little bit more detailed, like some the Invictus poem I have up here. I shared mm -hmm. that with my dad. I shared this poem. I said that I, I wanted him to know that what he and mom um, did for me, raising me, was not in vain. I'm going to teach his grandson everything he taught me. And so I go over all this in that episode. And so, solo, solo. So have there's two Have yeah. you ever done a solo podcast before? Before no. that, uh -uh. okay. So, so did you write that down? All that stuff? Did you do? I had a lot of notes because I actually had a lot of stuff that I had written to him. So again, this is like my first episode on a podcast that. Just the first episode of my own podcast yeah. after doing the podcast for five after years. After doing day jokes for fucking five years. Five years, yeah. And so that was a slightly different <laughs> turn from what you can I was used to. Phrase it like that. And so I didn't know. I was like, I wanted, but really, I wanted to get all. I wanted to get that information out there for my kids to be able to find one day. Because I looked at like, how can I start creating stuff right now that are, is going to be able to be found in twenty years? Mm -hmm. We put in a computer like. I, they're not going to know that that computer might break down. Yeah. So yeah. I actually handwrite it somewhere. What if there's a fire or it gets lost in the shuffle? Yeah. I looked around at like these evergreen apps. Uh, I wasn't sure if they're going to be around. And so, right. <laughs> fuck. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Like two, twenty years, yeah. twenty yeah. years for an we app. Yeah. No, I didn't know. I didn't know. But I was like, you know what? Anything I do on social media or in podcasts, and I put out in the digital world, they're going to be smart enough to know and down the line to find mm -hmm. it. Plus, if anything you put out there that you didn't want to, they certainly would be able to find it in 20 yep. years anyway. So yep. you might as well fill it up with the things they... Yes. So I told, <laughs> so I told that story and, and for Dad, right? And, and a lot of the stuff, and I put it out there um, and had a tremendous amount of positive um, things that happened with other people that listened or resonated with a lot of people, which is like a, a collateral benefit, right? Mm -hmm. um, I remember there was, you know, people in, there was a guy in South Korea that reached out to his dad that he hadn't talked to in 10 years. And I kept getting all this feedback. Those other cool ones, right? Yeah, a lot of this, a lot of this that's feedback, what, that's though. And then you know what? Yeah. That built, I mean, it's already there, but that, that's what I mean when I see, like, that vulnerability is strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not, you make a difference. With that. Not yeah. being vulnerable yeah. is a weakness. Yeah. Because not, not having what it takes to put that out there, like not being willing to put yourself in that situation, 
you're basically taking your experience away from giving value to anyone else who could value it. Just mm-hmm. like that guy. Most likely, would he have sent something to his father? Who fucking knows? But certainly maybe, not maybe that maybe day. Not. Probably not yeah. that day maybe, and probably not that not. week and probably yeah, not yeah. that month. And, yep. and It makes so, a difference. Yeah. 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 So, that, so that podcast and that really highlighted why there's a lot of other reasons, but like when I say health is wealth, because mm-hmm. you can have all the money in the world, but if you're not healthy, it doesn't matter. How, how old was he when he died? 64. Fuck, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, you're not even retired. Fuck, so, almost yeah, so that was one example of me just sitting down and I had some, some typewritten notes. And every time I do it, I have, um, I type up a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Did you print it, too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It also needs to be tangible. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, and so, and I didn't expect this, but then I started doing stories. Um, again, like, what do I want to put out there as a reminder for my kids and other people? Did that make you want to write? Funny you say that, because for the last week, I've really been heavily considering writing a book. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's... Yep. But the Instagram, writing on Instagram and then um, being expressive through the podcast has been like um, an outlet, you know, taking like pressure off the valve or something, you know, being helping, you so know, much. right? It helps. So it helps. I think this is a part of podcast. I, I think, so that's not why I started the podcast, but this is a main reason I continue it now is what it does for me as a person. Absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to explain. This is why like a podcast, it's, if you're not doing it for you, you, you'll never last. I do it because for me, it allows me to have all the stuff in my head can finally has a way out. And as long as a, it's funny, it's like that, you know, collapsing of the wave in quantum mechanics. If someone can hear the stuff in my head, it's out. It doesn't yeah. have to keep spinning. Now it's in the world. It's not mine anymore. Yeah. It's out. You're transferring energy, right? Totally. Yeah. That's, that, to me, that's what the podcast is. Yeah. But that's why we did it the way we're doing it, because I can't do that. And so I decided, me, we were very clear with Tyler, where I was like, this has to be me transferring energy, all the knowledge, and there can be no, bar- no barriers, no limits, yeah. no, none of that stuff, because otherwise, it'll become, the second it becomes work, I'm out. Yep. So I did another episode on one of the solo episodes was actually on this book here, The Art of Living. Victorious. Yeah, some Stoic philosophy stuff yep. that I got years ago from my aunt, who fast forward when I put out this episode, um, was diagnosed with stage four uh, cancer. Jesus Christ. And so I dedicated the episode completely to her and that brought the fire up in me to put an episode on that out. You I've done one on grief. But by you myself. have to write because you have oh, yeah. but you have the right mentality to for me I'm doomed when it yeah. comes to writing. Yeah. But you have the you have what it takes to write. Well thank you. You know, thank you. you know what I mean? Because you and then and yeah. you have the structure but without losing the creativity and the vulnerability. I think the biggest problem is usually when people have structure like you do, they're incapable of expressing true feelings. Because you know, they try yeah. to make they try to put words mm-hmm. together. Well, and I, make it sound good and all that shit. Yeah, but I mean, that part, I, I'm not. I'm not really interested in anything sounding good. Yeah. Other than exactly. like, yeah. cutting through, right to the point that we as human beings feel, without the facades. Yeah. Yes. Right. And so. Right. But I thought about it. I'm like, is my garage door just going to turn into a big whiteboard, and I'm going to have a oh, Act that's, One? That's just, my yeah, office. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, but see, yeah. that me, that's where I thrive. But that for writing, it's, it's a failure. Like, I'll never be able to write the way I want. I'll go crazy before that. Yeah. You'll, well, do, you'll do really good, so I can't wait for you to go after that. Yeah, nah, well, you'll do good with that. Yeah. I think the ability to articulate solo anyways, what that, what that is... It is so hard. Is, it's the, kind of just the nature of what writing is. I mean, it, it's just yeah. an outlet that you're more familiar with. You yeah. know what I mean? I think with the podcast space, it's... it's so just, hard to do. It's a really... Plus, it's in your voice, though. That's the other thing. I think writing is valuable, but for you, for your kids, when they're older, yeah. Yeah, but you it's really it. nice to hear your dad say those things. Yeah. You know? Do yeah. you get tired after? Oh, yeah. I meant to bring this up earlier. Thank you. <laughs> so, Julian's a fucking diva after we podcast, by the I'm way. I'm so tired. No, the, <laughs> but people ask, like, why don't I do them more often? 
Okay, there you go. <laughs> and I'm like, it's such a a huge emotional investment for me. Right, it's the most draining thing. Yeah, ever. yeah. It like the the preparation is one thing, and lucky for me, I I I, I naturally am just able to like pay attention to something for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Like I yeah. I can do it. Mm-hmm. Like. Like you tell me to do something, yeah. I'm like, I'll focus on it until it's done. So probably to a fault because it, my wife gets annoyed with that. <laughs> but uh, honey's not done yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I really like get deep into like the guest and like what makes them generally what makes them hurt. I've had people on that have um, kids have committed suicide. I've had people come on who lost a kid to in a in a car collision. And really being empathetic. That one. Yeah. yeah, but really like getting empathetic and really feeling them so I can help them tell the story right. And then I'm just like tired and I need to take a break. You absorb so much of it. Yeah. People don't understand. When you go into those subjects, man, because mm-hmm. I had that in assessments, so not even in a podcast, just in assessment, and you absorb a lot of it. Yeah. It's, it's emotionally, it's wrecking. It's so draining. Yeah, it certainly takes a toll, and it's I I um I don't have the emotional bandwidth to do it weekly. I don't when, it's totally also good. not like your job is a job where you're not engaged or doing. That's another problem. Either. You know, <laughs> like it's not, it's not it's not like you just do this. It's not like no. you just do podcasts. It's also right. not like you go and sack groceries for five days either. You know, yeah. When yeah. do you put the gas back? Which, in? by the way, I'm very been... grateful for them. It's a lot of work. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, they don't fucking do for you in Europe at all. So yeah, yeah you do it. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to customer service in Europe. But, by the way, also for the video uh, guys, I just want their Tyler's on a much higher chair. Yeah, yeah I'm right not. Now. Just so you know, I'm that's not, why he's much taller. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I actually here's the deal though. I gave them. I gave you that and that there specifically with me back, so I'm not out angling you. If I wanted to win, yeah. We'd be right here. <laughs> I love you in ending it, by the way. <laughs> but so that was also so that was the reason you did not do the video. It's to yes, not yeah. interfere with your guests too much. Mm-hmm. Well, also though, before we when we talked about before with right, right, Scott's in law enforcement mm-hmm. has right. been for quite a few years. Mm, uh, Thirteen years now. Thirteen years yeah. in Los Angeles, the belly of the beast. So I'm guessing it's not like you're just sitting around like the uh, Maytag repairman waiting for. No, the because phone you're on the field. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So I'm guessing that's a little heavy to be coming in and then coming home and then having a big podcast to plan and do it. I think to work podcasting in at all, even if you don't give a shit, truthfully, if you want to have a fun podcast that's an hour once a week, it's still a lot of fucking work. You got to yeah. disconnect from your week. You got to go somewhere. You got to make it matter. All of that stuff well, is hard. Let being, alone having it's one that's three to one engaging. be on. Yeah. It's not that simple because some days you're tired or whatever, you're nervous and you have to be on no matter what. So at first, the first 10 minutes, it's always, it comes out of your emotional battery. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I sit prior. I don't know if I did this with you. I don't remember, but I'll sit and I'll, I don't even, sometimes I'll just hit record, but I don't just start talking. I kind of, I do my own like breath work mm-hmm. and kind of wait until I can kind of, until I'm in like this um, cognitive state. Then I go. Yeah. It's not just like, okay, boom. <coughs> boom. To initiate the relationship with the person you have in front of you, for them to go into deep stuff with the trust that is required in a podcast and everything, I think people will never understand the, the work that goes with that, that you do within yourself. To be able to be in that state, to create the trust from that person in a stressful environment, because when you're being recorded, it's, it's a stress, yeah. right? Yeah. You, that that openness comes from the energy that you put in it and yeah. all that energy is being created by you you don't suck it up from the person you don't suck it up from the universe that one comes from inside and i find it's extremely draining it is it is and so you do it for the right reason i guess yeah. and so <coughs> with uh with video um it's harder. just another like the message and the conversation is what is important to me. Yeah. Everything else after that is secondary, like photographs, video, because those are just other distractions coming in and grabbing and like 
fighting for attention. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm talking to someone, I want their attention on the conversation. I don't, I don't want them to think too much about their posture or where the okay. camera is no, totally or true. are they smiling? What, what is their stories or face telling? Either yeah, or just reminding them that they are being interviewed. Yeah. That it's not a conversation with you. Yeah. Yeah. That alone, yeah. Uh, the second, again, people that are not used to it, the second they remember they're being yeah. interviewed, the facade might come up, yeah. the words might change, they yeah. might go into that story that you, yeah. know, you wanted to get out of them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough hour. And even for the person being interviewed, it is taxing, especially at first. Like you leave, I remember the first, even the podcast podcast, which were simple because it's communication information but it's a lot of jokes and everything you come out and you remind me of jujitsu session at first like how much energy i had spent you know in the car back you were like oh my yeah. god like oh i just did that and you're like oh and then you can't say when is it coming up two weeks what i need to wait two weeks to hear myself well that's not right uh, <laughs> well it's like jujitsu with wits you know? yeah, you exactly. you so you're like how did i sound was that okay <laughs> like oh man i remember it's yeah. yeah after a while you're like yeah whatever but the first the first few times it's something like i it must be something for your for your people to come and have those kinds of conversation i would the the next two hours after the podcast i'd be very curious to see the mental state they're in, if they go into such deep conversation and stuff like that, how they handle it after. Yeah. Because on the drive back, oh, like be by yourself in the car on the drive back. Don't have someone else talking to you. Just yeah. take that time to come down. Like you'll feel it's coming down from the high coming off a podcast. Yeah. It's very, it's very specific. Well, I also, that's not my intention though, you know? That's just, yeah, that's just the, way that's the nature of it. That's, it's somebody, that's yep. how it's going to be perceived, and so be it. Um, but to circle back, to highlight something about, to about law enforcement, I think people forget when it comes to first responders all over the country, is day in and day out for days, weeks, months, years, decades, that these guys and girls are constantly responding to the, the worst parts of human behavior. They're dealing with acute and chronic stress and trauma. That's the nature of the job all the time. And mm -hmm. absorbing, I don't know if you guys have ever called 911, but that's like a, to, just to do that, to call 911 is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. you're in trouble. Something, yeah, it could, like that could be the worst day of that person's life. Mm -hmm. and, but to the first responders, that's just, you know, call nine yeah. out of however many they go to that day. Yeah. And that takes a toll that I think, um, you know, there's started to be like an awakening to realize how kind of hard that is on a human. What about for you though? Yeah. You know, I see when you, when you describe that, right, you're going on however many calls a day. It's always, it's always much. It's always intense. It's always a thing, but I'm guessing you're kind of in and then you're, out, if you will, of that situation and mm -hmm. on to the next, in which you maybe never even see a lot of the context. And is that maybe what you find often in this podcast as well, where you're able to, while you're talking with somebody about something difficult, you're actually able to get through the next few steps of it, which is processing it, yeah. and understanding and feeling a human connection to it, which often, I suppose, sometimes you get a situation stable and secure and then you're needed somewhere else when it comes to work. Yeah, a lot of the calls, though, some of them are just, you know, I don't know, it could be anything like, my neighbor's TV is loud. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, that might okay. not have a tremendous, well, it's yeah, like maybe you annoying, want to, like, go talk to your neighbor. Maybe, yeah, exactly. But, maybe maybe you do that. want to sit down with that guy for an hour. That might be interesting. Well, there is a cool <laughs> idea of, like, like, getting to know each other and actually talking to each other, but, yeah. uh, but a lot, not all the calls are just, like, have emotional like shit. calls. yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, I'm not a psychologist here and I don't think anyone really fully understands the, how it builds up and how we store emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. um, there are those certain calls that are really bad. Uh, sometimes people have to retire from stuff they've seen. Um, some calls, some things happen that like just stick with us or in our minds all the time. Uh, there's been calls with kids that affected me with my kids and still do to this day. Then it will go away. No, truly, right? Well, our 
like ability to um, like deal with it, right? Our ability to cope with stress isn't something that's really taught. Well, it's well. Let's be honest. Like even in the cop culture, it's like be tough, shut up, suck it up. Otherwise, yeah. you're not. Yeah. But that again is a old school culture. Exactly. Like it doesn't have to be like that. You can. We would do so much good. Yeah, but there's there's yeah you gotta compartmentalize sometimes to be to effectively. While do your you're job. doing the job, but then you have to deal with it. After. Yeah, but there's so much. I don't I don't know the answer for this, but like there's so much there's so much that everybody would, would need to go, and there's a lot of people that really need it that don't realize it. Right. So the first way to to fix a problem is always to recognize there is one. Yeah. I think cult, even on a cultural level, the fact that to allow the guys to go like. Oh my goodness, what was that? And like, you know, saying just, I'm, I was literally that affected by it. But you know, like on, on a cultural level, not just like, because I'm sure you had guys where you were able to talk to after and maybe bring them back a little bit or stuff like that. But that's just, in a way, out of, out of kindness yeah. of your heart. That's your, you know, your code that you have. But on an institutional level, like they need to understand that just sending the cops back home, like, yeah, yeah well, I mean, Well, here's the deal. If you talk about, uh, and generally, I apologize for everybody because usually this topic derails. Well, yeah. Like, but we had Bill on the on the podcast. If you have um, someone that's applying to be in law enforcement, right? That process is stressful. So you're already in a sympathetic state of yeah. like the interview process, the physical fitness test, the medical, the psych exam, like all of it. And then if you get hired, you get put into a high stress academy where you're getting yelled at all the time. You gotta yell out some speeches. You have to worry about your uniform. You gotta worry about your tests. You gotta make sure you're walking in step, that you're not late, that you're doing your studying, you're not misspelling words. It's constant stress. And then you get put in traffic and you're driving mm -hmm. traffic and then you got homework to do. And the whole thing is stressful. Then you get put into a field training program with a, a, a field training officer and there's stress within the department. They're stressed like, how do I talk? Do I say yes, sir? Or do I say yes, ma'am to everybody? Am I allowed to make eye contact with somebody? Like, what is it? Where's a new guy fit in here? <laughs> Can I put my hand on your shoulder? Yeah, like <laughs> there's all kinds of stress there, uh, just getting judged by a, a training officer. And then you haven't even dealt with police work yet. Yeah. Yeah, you haven't done the bad stuff yet. You haven't gone to the bad <laughs> stuff yet. So that's so it cranked up into the sympathetic state. And then you, you get off as a, a an officer and you're in the field and then there's all that you're still and in the sympathetic state. And then real stuff styled. Yeah, exactly. You're in sympathetic state all the time. Traffic, calls, and then let's just say you're having, you know, family, kids, I don't know, relationship problems. Yeah, yeah. So all this stuff goes on and then you're constantly dealing with the worst parts of human behavior. So, yeah, that's just the thread that's running through the yeah, whole yes. thing. Yes. <laughs> so here's the thing. So this whole thing, right? And this isn't just law enforcement. It could fill in, you know, medical doctor, fill in emergency room nurse, paramedic, it doesn't matter, but I'm in law enforcement, so that's the example I'm thinking. So yeah. at no point in time in there, so I always ask, and if, and if anyone's in law enforcement, follow along with these questions. Um, the department has taught you how to put your uniform on. It's taught you how to draw your pistol. Mm -hmm. If I ask everyone at an agency, how do you clear a class three, like a stove pipe malfunction in your handgun? Right away, everyone knows. Right away. How do you cope with stress? Yeah. Not sleeping. So yeah. the chances of that stove pipe happening in real life are like 0. <laughs> I've never even heard of it happening. <laughs> But we, we use pretty knows. reliable weapons. Everybody knows, <laughs> like, <laughs> everybody knows how to do it immediately. Yeah. And I say, how do you cope with stress? What do you think the most common answers are? A drink. <laughs> I don't stress. Yeah. Well, no, it's usually some quiet and looking around with the eyes, you know, trying to like look to stimulate a part of the brain that doesn't have the answer anyways. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the, that part of going in through stress is a chance of that happening is 100%. And right now, if you look at like law enforcement suicides are, 
I think last I checked, it was more than double the amount of officers that have been killed in the line of duty. So traffic accidents, fights, shootings, add up everything that officers have been killed in the line of duty. Suicides is double that. And so... Yeah, stress gets to you. So we've never, there's not a no lot point, of lives being lost but, by because the way, of jammed and, weapons. But that's but, not even the only percentage we need to put in. What I want to see next to that is uh, spousal violence, mm-hmm. beating up the kids, uh, you know, like uh, the drinking, like all the stuff that stress will lead you to. Yep. Because if you're about to snap and commit suicide, chances are the year before that was not there's good. There's usually some wreckage piling yeah, up. Yeah, and, there's, a ton, there's a ton of symptoms. Yeah. And actually one of, the, one of the big ones that people say that are kind of aware when it comes to um, coping with stress, and it's a great answer, which is physical fitness, and working out no question but by its very nature it's still a sympathetic response like guys are cranking mm-hmm. up their music they're doing their coffee they how they pre-workout. do workouts i gotta get fired up raw yeah, yeah. yeah and, and they're, they're, not, they're still they're still staying in this yeah. upshift state yeah. you know yeah they don't know how to down regulate so to go back all so sometimes yeah that gets emotionally tiring you know, I went back <laughs> to, to finish on you know that. How you know Scott's good at segues? It's because he's like, he, he'll use terms like to go back and to loop back yeah, around. Yeah, that's why he's done this. And I'm like, enough. I don't fucking even know what we're talking about. And when I was in, uh, in New Zealand, I got to see the whole Maori. You know, I was taking around mm-hmm. with the Maoris and everything. Henry took care of me over there. And he, um, they were showing me like they have special, um, not a village, but it's more, almost like a temple where the warriors would go to after a war. And they would go there for as long as they needed, where they were taken care of before they could go back to their family. Yeah. And some would actually never go. They would stay there their life because they were never ready to go back. Yeah. But there was that in-between stage. That happens most a lot in cultures, military. Yeah, most cultures have that. Yeah, that right. happens. It, it does, I mean, I, I can't say for how it works too well because I wasn't in it, but the military has that like downtime. They have some. But yeah. law enforcement is like a 20, 30 year deployment. <laughs> Yeah. Right, weekly, day in and day out. And, and, in which go, also your family is subjected to your daily whims, yeah. which is yeah. not often the case if you're deployed overseas. Yeah, and the, and the sad part is about about that part, um, that dealing with all this stuff and not having you know, the tools to not only uh, have the awareness of it, but to regulate it, is that there are those collateral victims to the same stuff that we're going through. Mm-hmm. And that could be like distance, you know, inattention, not caring about silly things like, you know, what do you want to have for dinner? Oh, uh, I'm getting I don't angry care. at it. I don't I don't care. Care. Yeah, but it's if we're at, at work and yeah. someone's like, where do you want to eat? We'll argue for like 10 minutes about mm-hmm. this, where we're going and why. <laughs> yeah. You come home, you're like, uh, you have like decision fatigue. You're like, yeah. oh, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, because you're trying to downregulate. Mm-hmm. You're trying to not stay in the sympathetic state. There are ways to do this better. This is where I would like That's to see. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see the field starting to understand on how to go at this. So, Scott, it sounds like though, like maybe there's not, maybe there. I'm sure there is some, but maybe there's not an. We'll say there's not an overabundance of tools presented to you for managing stress, right? Yeah. And so the question is, you seem to have made that a priority. And what do you do in order to manage stress? How do you manage stress, cope with stress? Well, I'm not like anywhere near like uh, the leader in this stuff when it comes to law enforcement. There are guys that have like all the degrees and specialties and books that are Mm -hmm. working on it throughout the country. Yeah. Um, Also, my generation has is we're at that point where we are reactive and trying to fix all the stuff that we messed up on. Mm-hmm. Kind of like when CrossFit came around, yeah. like I had to go back and like, well, I can't do that because I have to go back. My shoulder's so tight from yeah. this and this, I never took care of it. Yeah. Versus Turns like, out that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but versus like people that start in it at a younger age and might have like you know, mobility is uh, build a better base. Or, or, may, or may, even that start now. Now that we know the mistakes we made before. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, like I know how to. If someone learns how to move well early on, then they're not going to be as corrective as someone that learns yeah. it later on. Yeah. And so to skill you're better off not losing than having to learn. Yeah. Is it getting better in with the law enforcement, like that coping with stress? Is, um, is the system being put in place? So improving. We are 
it's hard for me to talk about like law enforcement as a whole because I still talk about like it's, it's my little my see. sliver. Well, well let's what, talk about what you see. Yeah, but I think um, it's such a tremendously large ship that it's, that is it's going to take a while to. It's not a jet ski; it's a cruise ship. It's we're, we're huge. Agreeing it's okay. like such a big right. one, right? And so, but 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 the important thing is it's moving. It's oh, shifting. So it does. It is shifting. Yeah. As long as it's shifting, it's, shifting. It, it's a cruise ship. I understand that completely. Like this is yeah. like because I see more and more talks about the nervous system, about down regulation and stuff like that. So it is, it is going somewhere. But yeah. and it, again, I, I get it. It's a cruise ship, so it will take. You have the the ability to. It's not a jet ski. You know, self regulate. Yeah. Or self awareness, right? So you can self regulate, yeah. and those little skills are not that hard to learn. It's, they are there. They are there on a lot like of stuff. Actual, we can like the actual, like small breath work to do and all that stuff isn't too. Because you know the police um, issues in the U.S. is a huge thing continuously. This is where you start. You don't yeah. go after and start overcorrecting and blast stuff because yeah. the other side isn't good either. Like you well, don't want the cops to not want to work either because that yeah. never turns out well. Well, that's there is just like in life. Um, uh, in law enforcement, there's a ton of symptoms because of this. Right. And yep. it, we treat symptoms a lot, not the actual cause. Right. And, that's, and I feel, I feel I for guys. That. I'm like, I see, that I all see the time. like, I've seen guys go through some really bad stuff. And then the very next call, they're short with people. Yeah. And they were like, oh, this is why you guys have a bad name. I'm like, you have no idea. Like, yeah, but you don't no idea what that just human a, being a six just year old went getting through. raped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, and then, yeah. So I'm starting to work with the Heidhoven Police Force because in, in uh, Holland, um, they have a sports association for the police force. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And then, so they're going to basically bring me so I can do a seminar so we can start. But it was very funny because the, the conversation I had with so two cops, yeah. um, the equivalent, maybe not like you, Sergeant, but look below that, but they are, uh, you know, detective over or whatever that is, right? right? Um, for stuff like that. And they wanted to see, okay, so performance, stuff like that. And the, the conversation, I was like, how about we deal with stress? And they were like, what, what, what do you mean? I'm like, you guys are not stressed. Well, yeah, but you know, like we do CrossFit. I'm like, great. So how do you come down from it? And that was literally my conversation for 30 minutes. But you could tell that is not what they wanted to. Let's not talk about this. So the snatch. And, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. but okay, you're going to bring me 20 law enforcement people. I'm like, right. So how do you guys sleep at night? Yep. Right. Uh, snatch. I'm like, no, let's go. And, but that was by that <coughs> within an hour. They go like, can we do something about this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we can listen. And then I, yeah. and then because the guy knows the podcast very well, but it was, it was fascinating what they, what they wanted out of me first. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to do a lot better than that. Yeah. Let me do my thing. Let me explain. And they were like, cause I put him on the nutrition protocol and he goes like, I can sleep at night. I feel so much better. I'm like, yeah, cause I'm down regulating you. Yeah. Like I'm not just letting you in a sympathetic state all the time. He goes like, Oh, well, this, it's similar to being like, uh, let's just say we're in here right now and it's, mm-hmm. it's not, but let's just say it's stinky in here. We yeah. don't know it's stinky until we leave for a while and get fresh air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we come back in and we're like, wow, this is really stinky. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd be stressed. Then you realize you are stressed. Yeah. By the way, if you stink here enough, you won't realize it, but you'll start mouth breathing. Your system is already reacting to it. You just can't realize it because your conscious thoughts are yep. getting somewhere else. But that doesn't mean your body won't know. Okay, so you're in a set of straight, stress without even knowing. But that's, that's the point of this understanding how mouth breathing is tied to your sympathetic nervous system. That's an easy thing to teach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stop running, you know, like yeah. stop, stop running, mouth breathing. Stop, stop the, to do it. Nasal what's, breathing. what's so interesting is that that should be such an introductory subject before you're even talking to them about. It should be in the academy. Listen, my guys, yes. my guys exactly. need to snatch more. You're like, no, they fucking don't. Can you breathe? Not first. Yeah. <laughs> do you know that when I I went to uh, back in Toronto, we're talking '94, I think. I went to a Hicks and Gracie seminar. The first thing he talked about is breathing. Mm-hmm. And we all looked at each other going, what the fuck is he talking about? It's like that, don't mouth breathe, nose breathe. Like you can't do jiu-jitsu and inhaling through the nose. What are you talking about? Pick some Gracie, so he knows a thing or two. Yeah. But jiu-jitsu, first thing he talked about, I still remember. At the well, time I was like, uh, what kind of bullshit is that? So that right there, and I know you come to this hurdle a lot. And it's, it's the question I opened up with, with uh, Dr. Nicholas Romanoff, mm-hmm. right? 
And Dr. Nicholas Romanoff is like one of the world leaders in not only running, but human movement, right? Yep. Um, you still pose running. Pose, yeah, the pose method. So I asked him, like, how do you get people to see beyond what they think they already know? Is another question. <laughs> and by the way, I asked him that. I didn't prep him. I yeah. just hit him with that right away. And he looked at and you going, boom. motherfucker. I was just going to say, that is a, yeah. that's a fucking fan. Do you have hot up, please? But I also, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. I wanted him to know what's up. <laughs> yeah. Right? He's, He's done question. a lot of this stuff. Yeah. So I want him to know, like, hey, this isn't, we're not here just to, yes. we're actually going to talk here. Yeah, let's actually do some good in this world. Yeah, yeah let's, so he, let's go the hardest thing ever. So he, and I actually used his answer, uh, his voice over a little running video that I did with him out here on the street, like a little voice overlay. Mm -hmm. And um, one of his, his answer like blew me away. And not only did it blow me away, it would have blown me away if he had a week to prepare for it. <laughs> but he, it came off right away, but it started off with, he started off with talking about curiosity. Because if you're curious, yeah. then that, that keeps your possibilities open. That maybe, mm -hmm. so he, got in, he started talking about uh, curiosity and perception. So I'm not going to paraphrase his stuff. If you want to check it out, it's in the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. Dr. Nicholas Romanoff on CC Way. How many years of teaching does it take to come up with that answer? Yeah, oh, I because believe it. This I almost hit end. Podcast is over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I just fixed the world yeah. right there. Yeah. Just blow the candle yeah, out. Don't, yeah. Mic yep. dropped. We're done. So that, that comes up, I think, uh, in a, in, a teaching style and presenting information regardless of what it is to really paint the picture like that and open it up not that anyone's wrong not that anyone's right but we're going to talk about a possible exploration and curiosity to I'm, see i'm a bit more binary on this but yeah. i know but see if there's other ways <laughs> you're wrong <laughs> yeah but but also you it's a it's a, a tactic a leadership tactic yeah, right yeah. to get totally. them to lower their guard and to have some buy-in so that you can create a change yeah, that doesn't mean they're not wrong. It just means you can't you can't hit them with their wrongness. Well, like, usually to us, <laughs> if you don't mouth, just hit them you. over the head with wrongness. Short, done. If you if you're focused on the goal, a goal, yeah, then there's a lot of ways to get there. It might not be the way that you necessarily want to go, but sometimes you got to use other ways to get there. And so, but to me, yeah, it's it's the hardest thing in the world because this is when people attack you. Because you have said something that challenges them somewhere, and their answer usually is sympathetic. Well, that is and so a now clue they bring, they need, they need. Exactly. <laughs> but then they bring the whole conversation up, and so I'm like, why am I having to downregulate? Because yeah. you, you are yeah. wrong. And so, yeah, there, there's... And not seeing hey, that as a threat. regulation to yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't put me in it. Uh, peace and love, just not on me. Yeah. No, right? uh, but it's, it's yeah. that. It's the, the capacity to not see others as a threat, even when they are challenged. Yeah. That, that requires quite yep. a lot on, of control on yourself. And yep. that you learn that through teaching because you will be challenged on a regular basis by people that I, I'm sure they don't mean it, but they come out as very aggressive. Yep. And for you as a teacher not to perceive, perceive that as a threat sometimes is hard. Yep. And that's where, if anyone's interested in reading the, the, the Zen concept, Mushin, M-U-S-H-I-N. Mm -hmm. right? Talk about it. Ultra yeah. instinct. Maybe. Yeah, beginner's yep. mind. Yeah. That's a great concept. And, oh, and, uh, it's, a, it's the shit. It helps you so always be a student. Else. You're always a student and always learning. Mm -hmm. It's it's the growth mindset. I read that book. The good book, good book too. The that's actually uh, CJ was talking to me like uh, two months uh, on the phone. Carol Dweck yep. mindset. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very good book. Mm -hmm. You know that it comes back down to the to uh, good house law of economics. When a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. It was basically the same concept but from an economics perspective. I was talking about that with CJ because he was like, what? how are you? He was calling that like hyper learning right now. He was like, how are you doing that? I was like, well, I'll tell you. It's like I don't listen to any of the conclusions of any study. I don't. I read, yeah. study, like I read the book, which means I, I get what is interesting for me at the time because some stuff I never read to memorize. I only read yeah. to learn. You memorize only what you cannot learn. So, I, and it's Einstein actually said that, so never memorize something you can look up. So I never memorize anything. That's why like if people ask me certain words, I'm like, I have the time, I'm like, because uh, I don't memorize anything that I read, but I read to learn. So that, which means I go through studies and there's usually points that are very interesting because they fit a pattern that I've seen before. The other ones, I don't care. 
Yeah. And I absorb knowledge like that, but I never pay attention mm. to the conclusions that the scientists made because this is where their bias comes in yeah. and where they're trying to sell. I've and learned so, also about how, how, how the brain learns things too. Mm -hmm. There's a way to do this. And under, but also understanding how that works. Uh, one of them is attachment, right? Yep. If, you, if you attach it to something you already know. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're putting pieces. Yeah, attachment. So that's why find the patterns that you know well, that you know are fit your principles and attach to that. Yep. And then you'll be, this is how people actually win. The, you know, like the people that do memorization yep. stuff. Yep. They attachment. have an image that they attach to. That's how actually they you attach learn. attach it to acronyms or to Exactly, uh, or to images or yep. pictures or whatever. Actually, learning is like that. Is I go through studies for the patterns that I know. Yep. And then there's certain things I'm like, oh, I remember that. And that attaches, attaches, attaches. And when I do that, I start linking stuff together. What I've done is I've learned to learn. I've learned how yeah. to read. Yeah. People don't know how to read studies well, or papers. You know what I mean? They, they memorize. They well, look for the fancy words. There's a yeah. difference, though, of what you're doing. Um, you're studying. Yeah. You're not reading. Yeah, you know, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking. You don't say, ah, I read this book and I throw it up myself now. Yeah. Yeah, I've read it. Smart I am. I've, I've done the pages, 462 yeah. pages. I've read it. I, people don't know how to yeah. read. But then the other thing is, like, say, let's say you are reading, and if it, and if it's not something you're you can attach it, and you're actually trying to learn it, then you have um, impression. If it makes like a tremendous impression on you. Yeah. Something like an epiphany that it gets you. Or yeah, something like, like wow. Yeah. Ah, that's, I'm I did not, not I did forget not that. See that's that amazing. One yeah, I did Holy not moly, I got to keep one. reading yeah. that. That's the best feeling in the world, by the way. Yeah. When, you have, when you have, mostly it's papers for me, but suddenly it opens up a rabbit hole. Oh, man, I'll be, it'll make my next three days yeah. just smooth and like that's, that's what I run on when I do all that stuff is exactly that. And you know, the third one is repetition. If you think about it, if you meet somebody and you're like, hey, my name is John, you know, like, hey, hey, how you doing? And then it's like, wait, what was your name? John. Oh, yeah, John, John, you keep repeating. Mm -hmm. Sorry, John's out there. Uh, <laughs> but if you meet someone and their name is uh, Julian, you're like, oh, psh, attachment. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And then if you meet them and they're like, my name is Dynamite. You're like, <laughs> that makes an impression. <laughs> yeah. I remember you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, your name is really Dynamite? Like, yeah, it's on my birth certificate, you know. Even if it wasn't. I'm in. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Don't care. I, I know you now. Yeah. But also to circle back, like to the reading, versus studying. Like mm -hmm. you're studying, right? Yeah. You're actually trying to absorb the information, but not only. But also, you're doing it so you can talk about it and teach it. It helps. And I, I think it helps. That helps a lot. Yes. Yeah. So I have to, Yeah, because I always have that idea in mind that I'm going to have to use it in a seminar anyway. Yep. So that helps a lot. And again, that way it doesn't stay stuck inside. If yep. that energy is not transferred, I find it yep. extremely damaging almost. Because then it's I can't absorb more. It's a different level of attention though. Yeah, like, like I used yeah. to get sent to, the, to training things. When I would get sent to training with five or six guys at one time, we would go and it was just like, eh, I wouldn't even take hardly anything out of it. A lot of them aren't that useful anyways. The times where I was sent as the only person and then my job was when you would come back to, to have to debrief to everybody. everybody, yeah, everybody yeah. I'll be goddamned if I didn't, one, yeah. learn the most, yeah. two, make sure that I knew how to apply it, and then three, in the end, it was so fucking valuable for me because it actually worked. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you want like, to know. And, and, and in the end, I just came back, and because that's how I learned it, in that, like, all right, I have to teach this to these people, I learned it all in the right way, getting it to relate to people, getting it to application. You want to know if you know something, teach it. Yeah. No. Well, that's also your second, what I, what I mean by second level of attention, like, you you're actually looking, you're using your vision and your hearing and your appearance that you're paying attention to a person. But then you're adding another layer of like, I'm actually paying attention and trying to long-term memorize what you're teaching, mm -hmm. right? To absorb it. And it looks the same. Yeah. Yeah, but to truly absorb it. But that is a skill that I learn outside of reading too. That's, a ski, that's the Disney December stuff we did, the, you know, like, targeting the parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah. I do that when I do like low grade cardio with you know, my heart rate at a certain level and yeah. listening to high frequency sounds. So it promotes the parasympathetic. That's when I learned to read as well because I learned to look inside at that moment. And it's exactly the same kind of focus that I need when I read. Well, so you, I do it through exercise as well. Yeah, and you also were uh, uh, 
had a tremendous practice of that in mm -hmm. jujitsu. Yep. If you just learn a move, oh yeah, so you can do it for that session, but how does yeah. that benefit you? And then, yeah, and so and you're gonna have to do it on someone who moves slightly differently. With it. But that's where I think I learned to respect uh, principles and concepts so much, because if you memorize a technique in jujitsu, you're fucked. Because the next guy is not built the same, does not move the same, or does not have the same skill. You're going to have to be able to adapt to whatever. So we all go through that as white belts. Yep. We all try to repeat technique, it doesn't work. Yep. You take an arm bar, you crank, you go, it doesn't work. Yep. Yes, it does. You just don't know how to do it well enough. What do you mean? Yes. Yep. Did you call me stupid? No, just a moron. Not That's yet. all, don't worry. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a whole beat, and you're way into this more than I am, but I've, I've just started really like noticing that there's like this certain rhythm and beat to these systems, whether it's jujitsu or oh, yeah. movement or mm -hmm. uh, NFL playbook. Like you try and memorize what everyone, what yeah. route you're doing all the time. Well, you gotta learn a system because it depends on what formation yeah. and what, mm -hmm. if so you want emotion. Based, yeah. There's, there's a system. You, you, well, because objectives. you, you also run out of room for memorization. You, like your ability to simply memorize, slow. memorizing to is retain too slow. information for information's sake too slow. is useless. You know, the one, once you get to the point where you truly understand the routes and the shapes, the beats, all those things, like you're not drawing from memory. You're drawing from experience, which mm -hmm. I do think is a different thing. And I think, like just like with a football playbook, those yeah. things they then become second nature. They're a part of you now, and they're not. You, you then have yeah. knowledge. I'll go a step further. It's not knowledge. You have understanding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And that's a whole difference. Yeah. Right. But yeah. that's memorization is the problem. Is yeah, well, it's, it's shallow? It, it's school stuff yeah. when you're. And don't get me wrong. Like for example, white belt needs some memorization at first because it's the first to, step. They can't flow at yeah. first. Okay. So I understand better now that mm. that white belts. Because I was, I'm still against memorization, but I do understand that white belts need some of them, right? But there is a moment where you have to shed that and go into understanding, learning, not memorization. And that takes initiative too, personal responsibility. It's not a passive process. Like a lot of people yes. are, you seek information for information's sake. That's because, yeah, but okay, yeah. I'll blame the school system on that, yeah. which only teaches, unless you're a PhD, up until PhD, it's a memorization process. Yeah. So I understand where that comes from and from a society perspective and everything. That hunt of objectives is killing us slowly, but at some point, you, that's why I have craftsmanship so much, because they have to go to the next stage where you become active, where it becomes yours. Yeah. That's a purple belt yeah. in Jiu-Jitsu, when you yeah. find your game. Yeah. We can go on and on about schools and how it's just yeah. a little piece of intelligence and like, the, and like homework has always kind of bothered me, like yeah, allow them to go be creative and do stuff. But. Where, where does, yeah, like at least like the international school where Yaya is, is better because they, they have, you know, like they have actually acting classes, yeah. stuff where she, but again, that she has to do. So yeah. acting is like go and start screaming, like, you know, they force her to, yeah. in front of everyone, do the thing. So the energy has to come from inside. Instead of being <coughs> reactive continuously, mm -hmm. she has to be active. And that's what I think, what I see for most people is that they are mostly reactive. That's what the sympathetic gets you. It's mostly a reactive mode. Parasympathetic is yeah. a active in the sense of you create your own energy that is the hardest thing to do yep. but it's also where the magic is um we didn't necessarily do this on this podcast yet but i, I want to make sure that i want to thank you for doing this podcast with him and getting a strong fit podcast going because yeah. for a long time <laughs> yeah. for a long time uh you know doing the podcast and these other podcasts and stuff I was bugging him about doing more content. I was like, just turn on the camera and start explaining a yeah. sandbag mm -hmm. carry. Like you're doing, make videos. Just like, do more. Just yeah. put, yeah. you yeah. need to be putting content out. Yeah. On my own, it is the hardest. What it, That's why we respect so yeah. much the work, especially that you go that deep into your own stuff. On camera, on audio like this, by yourself, man. Well, yeah, not just mm -hmm. to do it, but to also create it and put it out there and curate it, if you will, which takes, you know, a little bit of work. For Julian, I, it was like he had the need for all of those things. Yeah. He, I, I've just found after yeah. knowing him and learning yeah. him and meeting him a few times and doing, working with the mentoring program and interning at seminars and workshops, it was like, oh, but he's not ever going to be the, you know what I mean? He's not yeah. going to do those other yeah. steps. He'll, be, he'll do this part, but where in you, you have that ability to take all that all the way through to the yeah. end. I cannot That's where finish, he draws that line. I, I cannot finish into and finish. And like I, I, kind of like you said, when I heard Julian on podcasts, living in fucking South Dakota, you know, I was just like, this is really good. 
and I would consume everything that he would have that was out there, but everything was almost the same basic, all right, reset. You don't know anything about me? Let's get you as far yeah. as we can in an hour. Next podcast he's on, all right, you don't know anything about me? See how far yeah. we can get in an hour. And, and it ended up being, and you could tell there was more there. Yeah. And so that it was one of those things was like, this guy needs, and actually the truth is, I wasn't sure if he could sustain the output. Honestly, yeah. like and exactly. neither did you though. Yeah. I, I mean, I was like, do content wise, right? Yeah. Have you heard on Julian's other stuff or other when th- him on other podcasts, sixty or a hundred or two hundred full episodes of new content? Of course not. That's a lot to get into, and so subject matter. I was like, can Julian produce oh, no, that? that I have no doubt. We get in. We're twenty episodes in at this point. At one point, and Julian is like. Oh, you got to come back. We got to film more. I'm like, we've got seven in the fuck. So at this point, he was far more prolific than mm-hmm. I expected. To where that was the new burden. Yeah. But it was a thing for me where I was like, he needs the platform to do it on its own, just because it needed to get to the people. I didn't understand that it would help move him. You move to, to, forward. Oh, that so I didn't know he would. Better. I didn't I know no he would help me that. as much as he had. But I also know how much. By myself, what you do would drain me to a degree that I wouldn't be able to do anything else. Like he would to do a pod, like a kind of podcast like you did, opening something like that. It mm-hmm. take me. It would take me three days to recover. We actually, I would have yeah, to be yeah. alone by myself, no one talking to me for three days. Yep. It would well, impact me with Aida. We've done some stuff with the business actually on doing like some specific like personality profiles, so you, yep. can, you can kind of see where. Uh, each person on the team can get energy fed to them and where they really get energy drained from. Which was funny. So that type of stuff, the everything else except for yeah. the delivery Creativity. is just would just sap you <laughs> completely. I live on creation. Basically yeah. that's what the profile was showing is that doesn't mean I'm gonna have to work on the other stuff. Yeah. It was just like mostly right now at least I live on creation. So this year I'm getting better at because as a boss I have to be now. I'm learning to look at structure and stuff like that. But that's why like, I'm very curious to see how you do it and everything, because I need to learn that. But for the longest time, I couldn't. Well, so when that happened, because I knew that, mm-hmm. I knew that he has a lot of stuff to teach from, from like everything from science to philosophy to carrying a sandbag and how that can reflect the way you are as a human being. Like, there's a lot of stuff outward to teach for people but as much as there is in in an outward expression mm-hmm. there's a lot the other direction <laughs> yeah. yeah a lot the other way mm-hmm. and what does all of that do for him this way yeah and yeah. why that was the key mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's like this there's like a, there's like a mirror there yeah and that's such a massive amount of stuff that like it can grow and grow and grow. So when you got involved and knowing how you are an organized, especially and I learned when you came the first time, I was like, ah, it gave me like relief. Yeah. Because I couldn't do it for him. Yeah. You know, and there was, I don't know if you ever talked about this, but there was a time where he and I and Jen Wiedersham were going to start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we had met several times. And it was, it was uh, that been cool. discovering strength. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, that's where we stopped. But that, that would have been cool. It would have been a very fact because of the different personalities and everything yeah. and then getting Jen involved. Um, but just the scheduling of all that with yeah, my, the my professional schedule and the family and then my odd sleep schedule and her professional schedule. And oh, it was crazy. On yeah, it just didn't. Yeah. It's so I made an attempt because I was like, oh my gosh. Something has to happen. This is yeah. something like, like really big that we can make happen. Mm-hmm. And then because of that, so yeah, because I mean, it was so much fun on the podcast. Podcast, we had the best episode when it was you, Armin, and me. Like yeah. that's when, let's be honest, that's when it was fun because we could talk about stuff like go a little bit deeper. Yep. Still funny, but those were cool. Yep. And the podcast, I'm very grateful for. I had the podcast. A lot podcast. of it, right? Yeah, it had. Um, well, I guess mine is too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, I remember my first episode, and I didn't know how to talk on a microphone. I didn't. I was very like, "What am I doing here?" It's kind of weird. You know? It's not simple. The first one, the first five, you it takes practice. 
And yeah. back then, you know, especially in the beginning, you don't have a lot of context for what podcasts are and how they're done. When you first start, you're like, yeah. what am I just doing? Some pretend TV routine? Is that what I'm supposed to yeah. do? You know, like, what is, you know, everything feels weird. I mean, you don't know the person in front of you. So yeah. you are yeah. having that weird. But there's also that context of like, do I want to put myself out there that much? Yeah. And then there's also the other side um, that being in law enforcement, doing this kind of stuff is kind of can be frowned upon. Talking about it, talking about your stuff, talking about the job. Um, it's kind of expected that you just be quiet and do your job. Did you ever get any blowback on this? Oh yeah, I still do. Oh really? Yeah. Ah, from up, up also? Uh, you know, both. Really? I'm totally okay with it though. No, well, I know you, I know you have. Yeah, yeah, I, I know you'll do it no matter what, but... Sometimes the, the, uh, this community, like others, isn't necessarily the most supportive of anything different than yeah. the way it is. It's like military culture, they're set in their ways. Yeah, yeah I totally yeah. see that. You know when I saw that, it was in Jiu-Jitsu as well with cops, is they would never spar with civilians. I saw well, that a lot yeah. with police officers, they refuse to spar with non, you know, yeah, police force I people. Mean, that's, I mean, which, I, no, I thought I it was stupid because were. you, well, they didn't want to tap to someone who was not from the force. Because they, yeah. they created that gap between this us and them. Yeah, well, and I was like, yeah, yeah oh, totally. And plus, the, the best people are not there. So I was like, you guys need to spar with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's, but I, I saw that yeah. there was, um, you know, cultural part of it. Issues there with the walls they were putting up. Yeah. Which I understand where the walls come from, don't get me wrong. But that is not the way to get better. Yeah, and you got to be careful also. Um, Marcus Anderson Aurelius, who, yes, that's his name, who was on the podcast, he said, he had this quote, um, you know, that um, misery loves company, but not as much as mediocrity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. Yep. Exactly. So if you're doing anything yeah. kind of like more than that, the mediocre guys are not going to be happy about it. Oh, I see that in France, man. Yeah. That's what the French culture kills me right now is they, they still have not recovered from World War II, and it's a culture of mediocrity. Like, if you try to be good, or if you shine a bit too much, like they'll just try to blast you down. I see it every time, but it creates desperate people. It is so dangerous. This is how you get revolutions happening and shit like that. Like, yeah. create enough desperation. desperation. Desperate people do desperate things. They, it gets it gets dangerous. Like I see that in the French culture, and this is why like I rail on them so yeah. much. Is you can see it everywhere. It creates yep. anger in people. But that is it, dangerous. It, it, but something I also learned about um, like anger, and I wrote about this on my Instagram. But what really is anger? It's grief. It's a it's a there's yeah. a separation between like that person's expectation of what should happen They're and reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the greater that distance. There's grief, and a lot of times it's it's grief, but it's dressed up in anger clothing. Mm. It's easier. Yeah. It's easier yeah. to deal with. Yeah. 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 Yep. But part of that also is making fun of, you know, and but a lot, you know, on the CC way, I've yet to do a law enforcement related podcast. I've thought about it. I've thought about doing a whole series of some folks in law enforcement. I have some folks <coughs> lined up from the military. There would have to be dozens of stories you would have access to. So why? Well, no, absolutely. But your... yeah, it becomes like this gentle thing of what is said. Is also as a case active? Can you sue? Oh yeah. Um, everything, you, yeah, every word can be like. Can say, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, technically, every word I'm saying right now could be brought up in a civil case. Yeah. So it has for a long time controlled my words. I've been very deliberate about my words and had to think like, oh, no, I don't want to say it that way. Well, that means the person you're going to interview also has to be. The well, same that's the way. other thing. Is well, even that's harder whatever they say. Yeah. Like there were times on the podcast it would go a certain way and I would purposefully like keep my mic away from my mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm like, mm, I don't want to. This is not I don't want to go there. I yeah. can't even be seen engaging in such talk. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it comes into, into delivering the message and, and, and law enforcement, it's, not what you guys see on TV. It's not what you see in the media. Yeah, that, that is a yeah. specific story that is being told by someone in a certain way and they're using certain footage to explain it. Yes, there are some like uh, stuff that should not have happened. And sometimes that particular officer 
could be going through a divorce, hasn't seen his kid in a while, has a drinking problem, hasn't treated his stress and trauma. Mm-hmm. That human being started off wanting just to help his community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and they've gone yeah. through like, gone through like the worst stuff that that society and community has repeatedly over and over and over and over and over, like thousands, hundreds of thousands of times. And then it comes a point where it just boils over. Yeah. So um, there's a huge message there. And it's all centered around like, in my opinion, the love of community, the love of your brother and sister at your work. But all, it's all centered yeah. on on love. Nobody, not many. I should say nobody because it can't. It's nothing is that extreme. But don't just go thinking, oh, I can't wait to go ruin someone's life and ruin my life while I'm at it. Yeah. yeah. But there's a whole story and whole narrative there that I have been hesitant to actually get into telling. But we, the problem has to be addressed. It's also, I think, this is when those things don't get talked about, don't get addressed, don't. The needle never moves, man. The problem is, and I, I feel I feel for you on that one, is the one who starts to bring the needle usually gets the hammer. Or at least gets in more trouble than the guys after him. So it takes it takes brave souls to start those conversations because yeah, at first yeah, it them. gets having them. Yeah. Law enforcement's a, an amazing uh, job. And what, what I mean by that is that there's so and it's part of the reason why I got involved in it, there are so many pieces and aspects to it. Yeah. So you talk just about, just shooting let's just say you, you pluck a patrol officer and just put them in front of you. That patrol officer, we're expecting them to be uh, a black belt, a uh, sniper, an expert, hand-to-hand combat, jiu-jitsu ninja. Oh, we're expecting them to be a So stunt. have extremely high quality judgment in a all stunt. of situations. No, but to take care of crazy people. No, but not, they, they, need to be a, yeah. they need to be a stunt driver. They need to be, speak several languages. They need to know the law. They, know how to, they need to be a doctor, a psychologist, someone's best friend. They need to know how to, uh, an English teacher when it comes to writing reports. A little Spanish uh, doesn't help. Mm. All of it. Or it doesn't they, hurt. Like, uh, yeah. they, need to, like, yeah. they have to know the expectation of everything. And then, they, and then when it comes time, they have to know it right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, too late. All right, we're judging them on that decision. Yeah. There's a, it's just a tremendous, so when it comes to training, there's driver's training, there's, there's pursuit driving, there's parking, there's slow driving, there's case law, there's domestic violence, there's marks, there's handgun work, there's shotgun, there's rifle, there's uh, verbal jujitsu, there's, uh, it goes on and on and on. Uh, mental health training, that, that particular patrol officer could stay in training his whole career but the thing is, that patrol officer is needed in the field. They actually, because that person's in training, who's going to the calls? Yeah. So during all the the amount of training and the required training, like each department has a, their own standards and then there's like the, the state standards. So not every department is the same. But within all that mandatory training, stress and resiliency isn't the the biggest priority and even if it was it's still just a sliver let's just say it's one day yeah, a year they know how to let's just say it's one day a year getting everyone trained up on that is still logistically hard and expensive and we still have to weigh out well are we putting them in training or are we having them in the field it would have to be at the academy where we start well that's yeah. ultimately like if you were to go just like someone's eating bad you're yeah. not going to just yeah. you know Tell them oh, do here, here yeah. here's blood pressure medication you know you're not it's the best way it is to actually treat the, the cause. Yeah, it's adding instead of subtracting on that one. Yeah. yeah. So in my opinion, it needs to start early on. And people need to be stressed out. They need to be yelled at. They need, yeah, to, yeah. They need to be able totally. to stay things under stress. They need, they need all that. But then let's also sit them down and teach them how to cope with it. Yep. But that also goes, again, with everything in life. Yeah. But it's also a call it a universal skill that very it's not very universal. Yeah. Very few people have. And, and the crazy I think thing it's a skill that's there. being that's that's yes. being diminished over. The but years. we get no, we're getting there because if you look, there's more and more people yeah. talking about it because depression, anxiety, yeah. all that stuff is oh, rising to levels where, like we and in a system of the U.S. where if you have that, you have nowhere to go. It's a big problem. You have nowhere to go if it's not family, it's the cops. So which one you want? It's a big problem, and that and. And then dealing with like a human being that is, has a childhood, is raised, and then they become an adult. And then eventually they, because of what they've been through or what they have not been taught or certain things in their culture, eventually they come into law enforcement hands. 
And what do we do with somebody? An adult timeout, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's not like, and it's, and it's hard. It's a and this is something I didn't know yeah. early on in my career, but to really understand that what that person has kind of gone through and be able to show them love. Hmm. For, that would right. go a long That's, way. To be able to show someone like... Yeah, because if you feel them aggression, they know that. They don't, they've yeah, had that their whole the life, thing. they know should, that one. You're doing, you know, fire with fire doesn't yeah. really put out the fire. And so that's like a whole other concept. But but we're all so stressed out and strong and this is yeah like, how can you bring out love when you're and we're stressed taught, out we're yeah. taught that like like the, this, there's like the smell of the of victim's blood generally really pisses off police officers mm -hmm. like if somebody came up and like punched your mom in the face and then you found that person what would you do to them mm -hmm. like we just don't like don't victimize people yeah. but anyways so when they do, we find them, and like there's this particular person might have like in the womb, mom probably was doing meth, and then they slept on the floor, and they yeah. weren't playing sports, like they ate, you know, Cheerios every day. I don't know. Yeah. They've gotten to some point, and then they were abused, uh, and then they were forced into a gang, and then that gang forced them to break into this house. Now is that person an evil human being? Yeah, if you don't know the if we treat, story, yeah. it might yeah. be if I continue and, it, and it's easy to say I know but if we continue to treat that person as if they're an evil person then we're never giving them a chance to recover then they will always be that way right but it takes also yeah. so long for those people to be able to change because those defense systems in place are yeah. hardwired it takes time it takes energy and it takes yeah. people willing to show love instead of aggression. So the entire system has to be, sh to me, is the, yeah, it's looking at people a specific way. But I do think if you look at the podcast, if you look at where doctors are, we are starting to shift toward understanding better human beings that way because I think it's needed. Yeah. We'll have a crisis of anxiety and depression, you know, taking like two thirds of the population where selling them pills is not working. Right, yeah, that's the like, 60s, 70s, 80s. It's not working. It's painting a dirty car. Yeah, it's not working. And I think slowly but surely, we're starting to come to the realization that there is a deeper thing at play than just a chemical imbalance in the brain. Take that pill, that patch, and you're done. I mean, so I, I do think it's just it's slow. Yeah. It's yeah. just slow. So, Scott, do you have anything that you would like as far as like to send people off with from a stress, cope with stress? thing hmm. any advice that you've learned in your from your time that were like I feel like you're probably more suited for giving advice on that than I or maybe even Julian well a couple easy things because mm -hmm. I wasn't again this is I wasn't raised in this and I haven't been studying it my whole life like some people have so there are certain things that stood out to me that I latched, latched on to that is easy to teach a couple things one is that you know in order to regulate your emotions you have to stabilize your attention. And if you can stabilize your attention, it gives you kind of a little bit more control. So, and that's generally done through the breath. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing mm -hmm. is to, to pay attention to your breathing. Just that alone, like pay attention, just sit still, breathe through your nose and see how it feels, feel the air going off, bouncing off the inside of your nose. Just focus on that little piece. And to add a little bit more, a one part inhale to a two part exhale. So if you inhale for four, a count of four, whatever count you want, and do a slow exhale for a count of eight. Just one of those breaths will make a difference. And where that comes from, the inhale tends to be tied to the sympathetic nervous system. The exhale is a parasympathetic response. It's actually why I don't like the whole take a deep breath thing. Take well, it. they will take a yeah, Tell me how you do. Exactly. Well, that's, yeah, the thing. that's the so, but That's why I'm careful. I generally I'll say, hey, take a long, slow exhale. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's this. Breathe through your nose. One part inhale, two part exhale. And then, like, find a little like while you're doing it. The next step would be like find little tension spots. Generally, it's like in right here by your ears, like your jaw, your neck. Those spots that when you get further into that stuff, into yeah. breathe and breathe, all of a sudden you realize like, wait, why am I 
Why am I like this? Why, why is by the way, you yeah. realize why, yeah. why am I is, like this? Why yeah. are my traps being contracting? Why is my jaw yeah. clenched? Why yeah. is my jaw been clenched? Has it been like this all day? You know, it's mm-hmm. it's very interesting when you see where you hold tension. But then even attention. but even so through through each exhale, and this can be done in like a few breaths. It could be five breaths. Mm-hmm. On the exhale, let that tension go. Find it and then let it go. I don't even don't, don't even bother asking well, why is that there. Because then now your attention is on that. But do it on the exhale. On Don't the do exhale. it the whole yeah. time. You won't be able to let go completely. So only on the, on the exhale. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure Julian has talked a lot about this, is understanding your vagus nerve and how you can stimulate it and let it work for your benefit. I think we've got a few. We have a few. Yeah, I'm few sure I, by now one. you probably have a few. But it, it ties up to so much stuff. You know where I get frustrated is that most of that stuff is already out there. The more I read, the more I see things that at least the medical world ref- refuses to breach, to talk about because it's too, it reminds people too much of the 18th century and they just want to stay with a reductionist view of the world, even though there is proof of the contrary. Like when was the last time you'll hear a doctor talk about aura? Mm-hmm. They can't, right? It's not scientific, except the heart produces an electromagnetic field that is 60 times stronger than the one of the brain. We know that it produces a magnetic field 100 times stronger than the brain that is about 3 meters wide. Right? And we know, because it's been tested through ACG, through the heart and everything, that, for example, anger versus contentment does not carry the same signal. So the magnetic field that you put through through your heart has actually a message of anger versus information of anger versus contentment being broadcasted. Hmm. All right, how is that not aura? Well, you know, you this just, is scientific stuff measured. I'm talking about. You just got. I just, you just reminded me of this concept, and I'm sure they're tied together. Um, that it was Max Strom, S T R O M, who has a fantastic um, TED talk on when it comes to doing certain types of breath work and related to relieving grief in men, generally like three to five mm-hmm. minutes into it. And he talks about how we tend to carry stress, trauma, and grief in our like rib mm-hmm. cage and torso area. To other heart, yeah. Yep, all this stuff and how that do, can actually like... Do you know the heart is his own nervous system, is actually his brain. He has ganglia with neurons in it. He yeah. produces oxytocin. Yeah. He produces dopamine, hey, uh, epinephrine. Yeah. Like yeah. the heart is a brain and a nervous system in itself. So, to make it easy to understand, or at least for me, um, an example to tell people, because you're just telling people, oh, you know, if you do the one part inhale, two part exhale, and if you actually make a humming noise, it'll help you relax. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, have you ever met someone that's really stressed out and they keep doing this all the time? <sighs> yeah. <sighs> well, that is your body doing what we are saying. Mm-hmm. It's like, <sighs> you have a long, slow exhale, with that growl yeah. and vibration mm-hmm. stimulating your vagus nerve, mm-hmm. helping you shift to a parasympathetic response. But you can actually manually do that if you have the self-awareness of it so that you can self-regulate your own system. It's a feedback loop. Someone once said on a podcast that I did, you are not a passive victim to your system. I maintained that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. And that's, to me, that's the biggest thing. That's what I want to see out there is that, yeah. is the reactive versus... Yeah, it's a so passive it goes, versus active. It goes back to this starting and, and training and talking about it and having yeah. it become part of culture. Yeah. yeah. I would love to see that for the... So the other thing I'd like to send you away with, everybody here who's listening to, is that one thing that you see that with Scott in the space here and what he's done, how many episodes of podcasts have you done, roughly? 35-ish? No, 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 total. Oh, phew. Oh, man. It's more uh, than 500, like, isn't it? How many? No, 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 no you weren't over. Five. I don't know, 375-ish, somewhere 375, there, somewhere around 400 yeah. podcasts, probably. Man. That's, that's a lot of podcasts. But now we talk about craftsmanship, right? And there's things that this isn't even what Scott's full-time job is, but he's pretty fucking good at it. Yeah. And I've you see in podcasts with what he does with the CSU, even what he does at the Wadcast is... And the way you set up the space, there is a craftsman's approach to it. Mm-hmm. And if it's if anything ever sounds easy that Scott's doing, it's not. I've done only 200 episodes of podcasts, give or take. 
So I'm about halfway there. And the thing that I find that Scott does very well, Scott speaks very deliberately, but also you're not afraid of silence, which on a podcast for people that are doing it, being able to take a moment where they are not yeah. speaking uh, is the thing that I'm almost the worst at. So it's the things that I appreciate that Scott does with the approach that you take to podcasts and all those other things. There's a lot of attention to detail that I think people but, miss. By the way, for you guys, how many podcasts does it take before you feel you're getting good at it? You might think you're good uh, after five or six, but I then after... The, I don't have the answer but yet. Then after, 200? But then yeah. after 50, 60, or 100, you're like, well, the first 50 were trash. And then you get to 150, and you're like, all right, so the first 100 were bad, but the last 50, I'm getting better. I always think that... I feel the, I'm really you might, you might notice. I always tell people, like, no matter what, if they find a podcast that I'm in, I'm like, I always lead them towards, like, the closest half to the recent time. Yeah. Like, whatever is on the other side of that midway point, yeah. I'm like, I probably am no, not but that but under 200, though. you're starting. Yeah. Let's be honest. Or yeah. At least yeah. 100. No, I, mean, we, I was telling Julian, I was listening to a thing today on podcasts, and they said, the truth is, podcasts got to have, you, you got to put in the time. 200 episodes, any podcast that you really listen to a lot of out there has got a one or 200 episodes, kind of, which means it just requires... A few years. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I practice. still, but I still haven't necessarily done an episode where I'm like, that was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I, yeah. that's not happening. Um, but you know what? I think, I think for you though, I think you do hold maybe not perfection as a target, but you hold a very high standard that you'd mm -hmm. like to get very close to. Whereas Julian and I do take a very different approach to that where totally. we come out with one and we're like, hey, that fit all the things. We enjoyed it. First off, yep. it was fun. We enjoyed it. We got the information out that we needed, and we're filming another one tomorrow. And yep. so for us, that's the the machine but that we have to them, focus yeah. on. Sometimes I watch our podcast so I can tell what the voice has to be and stating yeah. stuff yeah. for. For me, like it's gonna be a good cop, I'll be the bad cop. Yeah, like stuff like that. Like you, you find yourself. For me, I feel I'm barely starting. Yeah, the what helps is understanding your goal. Like, well, you have the why, right? But mm -hmm. then understanding the goal. Yeah. And if you hit your goal, and then the rest of the stuff is this extra credit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, the, the difficult stuff when it comes to one-on-one -on -one interviews is the ability to be present and looking ahead to the, the direction of the show. Yeah. You know, because yeah. before, the, on the, having, having co-hosts and stuff, someone else can be talking, you can be thinking and planning the next thing. And then they and yeah. it switches. You got something funny to say, like you're like, I got yeah. this now, and I got five more minutes yeah. of digital. Very difficult. Yeah. 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 To, but there's been some yeah. parts where I've like, um, I'll listen to it, because then I can actually pay total attention. Yeah. Without said, yeah. without thinking about anything else, and then I'll I'll pick up and notice. Oh, I missed that spot. I missed. Oh, he said this. I should have. Do you listen about that. to all your podcasts that you do? Um, Sisu A, I would be willing to bet you listen to. Do you almost have yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. No? I mean, yes, I do. Um, a lot of times, I'll listen to it so I can type up the notes, hmm. uh, and also to like grab certain quotes that I want. Because then, it's, and again, it's about attention. So then, I, but then I also really want to go back and listen to that person speak. Yeah, it's not just critiquing myself mm -hmm. and taking notes because like. But actually, I really want to listen. Because there is a thing where part of, I think, part of hosting a podcast is you have to get passively good at this really bad habit that people have when they listen to people talk, which is focusing on what you're going to say next yeah. or where it's going to go next, exactly. which is a shitty way to be out in the world, yeah. kind of. But like on the podcast, you just, someone's, if you're the guest, you're not too worried about what's going to happen next. As a but host, I kind of be like, well, if yeah. he just stops here, I don't know when the story ends. Yeah. If he just stops here, where the fuck am I going? And that's always kind of got to be in your mm -hmm. head. Um, yeah, well, you're almost like a, always one second in the future. Yeah. You know, uh, somebody that I learned um, how to be better at that from is Kenny Kane. Mm. And Kenny Kane, if you don't know, he's a former... Um, host of the podcast, but also has Body of Knowledge podcast, which is fantastic. But he, like, I remember speaking, he's been a guest on my podcast as well, but it, 
if I'm speaking, he's listening. He's actually like listening, and then if I, there's that like moment where I'm done speaking, and you expect the other person to talk, and he's kind of like, you can see the next thought hasn't formulated yet. Mm -hmm. So it's that active listening thing is really important. Yeah. And it's not just for podcasting, just in life in general, yeah. to actually utilize the skill to listen to what the other person is trying to tell you. Like actually listen to what they're actually saying. Yeah. Not yeah. don't not listening to respond to them with something about you. Yeah. Like and, I, and trust me, I'm not an expert at this, but it's a, it's a certain practice. It's a lot of reps you've got. But then also over. going going back to the podcasting and having a very high standard. Um, it's just I have I'm like that in everything. Mm -hmm. um, but that that process, the actual process of doing it, and getting the story told, is how I measure like I, the, the the downloads, like all the all the other stuff that happens after that is not interesting to me yeah like the only thing that's interesting to me after that is the effect it's had on other humans yeah the true quality of the content yeah that's if if five people listen to it and they were profoundly affected by that and then became better in their circles and affected relationships with mm -hmm. themselves and with other people around them to me that is a tremendous uh, tremendous success and it's also like i i don't i would rather have five listeners actual listeners than 5,000 downloads. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. You get the analogy out of the five listeners. Yep. Yeah, totally. Yep. And, that, yeah. and that has been something I did not expect and it's been a tremendous, tremendous uh, benefit um, you know, for me through the Sisu way. The amount of relationships and communications and conversations I've had with people around the world because and, of it. Yeah. And the amount of change you yes. started. Yeah. yeah. That one touches me every time because I yeah. get a few messages here and there where you know like you go like oh yeah yeah and uh, uh, it's almost like it, too much yeah it touches your heart yeah yeah some I mean, of them they, they touch you yeah yeah I got a message recently um, during during uh, you know the character mile I don't know how much we want to talk about that let's, let's do it. Um, well the character mile uh, ended of November I had this idea in my head, like a purpose, and the mechanism for it was to run a mile every day during the month of December. Yeah. And I made the post mm -hmm. and I said, anyone game. I was thinking maybe like five to ten people, you know, mm -hmm. eh, five or ten people will do that with me. It's a small group, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, I didn't know. <gasps> so that it would spread to 14 plus different countries, <laughs> right? And a lot, like I got a lot of feedback of people that were doing it. And then other people were posting it. And mm -hmm. then other people were posting it. And so it became this, this thing kind of like a little overwhelming for me because I wasn't prepared um, logistically. Like I didn't have, I was thinking, oh, I'll do like a, like someone wrote on the comments, yeah. like, oh, you should start like a, an Instagram chat group. You know, we get up to 15 people and we can talk about it. I'm like, oh, cool. Let me look into how do I get this? And I'm like, 1,500 people. Fuck. No, it was like up to 15. I'm like, okay, great. And then it grew, it outgrew that like yeah. immediately. Um, so people started um, using Instagram stories and stuff. So the character mile started in December. We just finished it. And that was to run a mile every day during the month of December. People found the challenge in running. People found the challenge in logistics like how do i get that in every day mm -hmm. uh the repetition the the, the challenge is if you're if you're if you're looking for the challenge they're in everything mm -hmm. but if you're also the flip side if you're looking for the opportunity the opportunity it is right really. next to it yeah. yeah and so it wasn't about actually running a mile and then i told people i didn't it wasn't about time it wasn't about or you ran, crawled, walked. Uh, it didn't matter if you rode a mile, just move. And that's actually where the shirt comes into place. It, and that was a celebration and uh, the health is wealth and being mindful that movement is a gift. And so you can move from A to B, then that is a gift. Mm -hmm. You forget until you're in jail. Yeah. yeah. So um, as it went on, Tons of people were doing it and taking their Instagram stories and I would share. I tried, I responded to every single message 
out there. I, I try to keep track of all the different countries. It went from like everywhere from Finland to Dubai, you know, France, um, Canada, Australia, UK, Ireland. I mean, all these places. Like, holy smokes! So that made me feel like, wow, like there's there's an entire community of people. Doesn't matter the country that are interested in this type of thing, mm -hmm. in this character, this community, and doing something re repeatedly, and so it made them reconnect with something within them. Yeah, and that was the other thing I told people: was like, I'm not bringing anything, I'm not creating anything in you. I'm just here to remind you how powerful you are. And there were different little parts, different little challenges within the challenge. One of them was find something heavy that speaks to you and pick it up and carry it with you. I picked up this log and took it with me. I uh, had some friends over. One of them grabbed that hammer, the mm. Sisu hammer. Another one grabbed a kettlebell, and we went. Mm. Um, some people uh, took their kids on their back mm -hmm. and did it. You know, but it, yeah. but it got people together. Um, another one was when we walk, when we run, we tend to kind of look down at the ground in front of us, mm -hmm. and so eye level. Yeah. It, this reminder was to actually look up and notice your environment. Notice the trees. What kind of trees are they? Notice the branches. Notice the leaves. I, did, I did the same thing for Disney December. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a, it, pay attention to the colors. And like, by the way, look it makes at, a huge difference. It does. It's such a big difference. Yeah, you start, people don't understand. Yeah, th there are miracles all around <coughs> us, and like uh, Dan Millman says in *The Peaceful Warrior*, there are no ordinary moments. So it's, don't waste. The moment, savor it by looking up and, and being, being able to look at eye level yeah. changes everything. Yeah. It's crazy, people yeah. don't realize how much they're looking at their feet. Yep. Or down. Yep. And then another one was around the holidays, and that was to take somebody with you that hasn't done it yet. So bring a family member. Yeah. Yeah. So there were generations. Like I went with my family, and there's three generations of us that were going. Uh, families from all over the world were walking together. Uh, taking grandparents and talking about how grateful they are for health and that movement is a gift and they're all doing it together. And so you know, I threw out little other challenges there, like someone that was running on a treadmill all the time, I challenged them to go outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, same. Yep. treadmill, you're not actually moving, you're just in one place. Plus it's the same place. You're in the same place. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted them to move. You would lose the value of the trees and the well, eyes. Yeah, but not only that, but there's moving from A to B creating that locomotion, it's, it it's in us. We're yeah. like hunter-gatherers, you know, you're yeah. in there, you're, you're, we're, it's in there, it's primal. Mm -hmm. And actually getting out and creating that mm -hmm. movement is important. It's and, a better way of, the, of explaining Julian's hatred for the assault bike. Yeah. Kind of. It's like, <laughs> exactly. it doesn't fucking go anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't well, move. And, <laughs> and so I use different, different people, I use different types of motivation to get yeah. them off the treadmill. You know, um, my buddy Lester, I told him, because uh, he's a very positive guy and, and very uplifting and always talks on his Instagram stories and actually fired me up but he'd be on the treadmill and, I, and then I sent him a message and I said hey R Rocky didn't run on no treadmill <laughs> <laughs> and so that I was, will use that one yeah so yeah. that was it so then uh, and other people was like hey uh, he sends you a video of him out like splitting lumber and chasing yeah, chickens yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, that they, would work by yeah, the way different yeah. different things motivate different yeah, people yeah, exactly. another one was like hey hamsters do you want to like yeah, hamsters exactly. run this stuff do you want to look like a hamster or yeah. uh, a uh, you know, what I say, a panther or something that's out there <laughs> on the, moving. Yeah. Um, but the point of it was, was to, it brought a certain level that health as well as movement's a gift uh, and to savor the moments and, and to look for all the miracles and then to reconnect with family. Because you, when you're doing a mile with other people, you're not on your phone. Weird, right? Yeah. You yeah. actually, you know, and, and, then, once, you mean. and then you also, it forms like that pack mentality you, and you reconnect. So, that was the character mile. And I did it in December because I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do it when it was cold. And I wanted to do it when it was unexpected. I wanted to do it through the holidays when it was difficult. It's inconvenient, yeah. When yeah. people eat what they shouldn't eat. Yeah, I wanted, yeah. I wanted it all during that time. And I wanted to bring a certain level of awareness and using that awareness to start the new year. I didn't want it to be, I didn't want to like, I don't know, like insult the integrity of the character mile doing it in January. Yeah. When it's like, Everybody's got a new year, thing. new me. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be character, but right? yeah, December yeah. is perfect. Doing when it's hard. Yeah, exactly. Doing when yeah. it's cold. That's the whole point. And right? then, yeah. okay, it's raining. Okay, good. 
I know, I get that one. Oh, I'm like, oh, Jesus. Oh, it's raining. It's beautiful. Rain is awesome. <laughs> Running outside and being outside in the rain is awesome. Yeah. You're doing also what Just other people want. Come oh, to Holland it? for three months. Trust me, you'll you get live in the rain. Yeah, yeah exactly. but like, if, is, it, is it cold? Awesome. Go outside. And there are people that did it um, in like minus 20 degrees. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but I love I love them because then they, you can show everybody else what's your excuse. Exactly. Like, I love those people. Yeah, yeah, they were great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, they they I show mean, everybody else that. Yeah. Yep. Out here, um, the best that I could do to match is to go run in the dry sand at the beach. Yeah. Look, yeah. look at my snow, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you didn't get much sympathy, I don't think, for that one. But but that's yeah. that's that is the character mile, and in fact, that the character mile is the next solo episode I'm going to record. Nice. Um, I always told the people it's not a me thing, it's a we thing. And so I had people write me emails that I'm going to read oh, on cool. on their experience, um, what they learned, and what collateral, or I call them peripheral, uh, uh, benefits they, they had because mm-hmm. of it. And That's I also really set up... Idea. That's a really I like that yeah, idea. Yeah, so I, and, and I have... Um, oh, in fact, so one of the messages I got, I was at work, and I'm in my uniform, and I read it. And it, like, I started crying, just tearing up all over my uniform, reading it. And so I'm going to share that on uh, cool. on the episode. But I also set up a phone number for people to call and leave voice messages that I'm going to upload onto the podcast. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. And I, pr- I gave them the opportunity. I'm like, hey, uh, leave this voicemail. You have up to three minutes if you want your voice to be heard on you this are thing. One organized man. I can teach you this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I did not know. Yeah. I didn't. First of all, I did not know how to do it at all. Yeah. And I'm, no, but those are great ideas. But, I love those ideas. But the email's easy, right? You just no, but reading those emails on the podcast. That's a oh, yeah, great idea. So, yeah. so I started reading a lot of them, and it like, like really, obviously, like it just started hit me hard on the inside. Yeah. And so, so yes, I but would, that's I, why we. Do I stopped, it, but I stopped so, reading them. Yeah. Because I want to read them. Oh, fresh! Oh, wow. so the emotions. I was like, oh, I like it. I like yeah, it. I don't, I like don't, it. I don't so. want to be too like uh, overly prepared and fake. Like, I actually. Oh, if, please! Like you're turning your own horn. I hate when. It, that's why I hate talking about myself, especially on the podcast and stuff like that. Because it always looks like you're just bragging. Yeah. That ruins the whole thing. No, for me, I, so, if yeah. it hits, it's gonna hit. And if so it doesn't, it doesn't. This yeah. episode, you're, you're you're gonna do that character mile episode. Mm-hmm. Now you have the Sisu way sits on at, on its own on Instagram as well, correct? Yes. At the Sisu way, mm-hmm. the Sisu way. So remember that. That's Tyler telling us we talk too long. Well, yeah, we have some battery and storage issues. We're right. up against. So we're yes. at two hours. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Yes. So um, the phone won't last. So, oh, so oh, Pixel two. Yeah, yeah. So, Extra camera. So, so, but they can find that at the CC way. Yep. And so, and the podcast itself sits in audio just where, just like this one. Yep. This will sit on iTunes, everywhere else that can mm-hmm. be found. You are at one Scott McGee. And that's the number one Scott McGee. Number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Julian's at Strong Fit One. I'm no, Tyler F. and Stone. I think that's about all we. Is there anything else you need to get out there? Contacts? Give everyone that sweet phone number so we can blow we'll, up We'll do shit. another podcast <laughs> call. We, we need to talk about the podcast days and where our lives were then and then where they are now. We'll do another episode. We need a yeah. behind the scenes episode. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, the story of the podcast. Oh yeah, we got some stories. Yeah. Good so, old days. I got I to gotta panic and check and make sure there's storage left and these things are still recording. Yeah. We've been if two hours, still so guys. We're good, but. Yeah. And then <laughs> but. we shall talk to you guys soon. But thanks a lot for coming on, Scott. Thank I you, really Scott. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Scott is one of my first ever, you're talking actually in order, I think my first two ever podcast guests are both here on this one. So there you go. That's pretty wild. It's, all, it's three years almost to the day yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, three years almost to the day. And so. this is just part of the path. That's right. Exactly. You got a lot more to do.